Okay, so the group of you um, made some startling uh, discoveries after getting back Nathaniel's notes from his workshop and staying up for a good chunk of the night deciphering um, his last diary notes. But um, as Torkel did mention, there's no physical research contained within them of the actual vein stone, though you guys are unsure whether it's existence or whether it's location, where its location is. But you are interested in meeting up with his um, ex-husband, Eric Paldrow, potentially next month um, at a location which you do not know is exactly, but you have a street name and you have a date. And then following on from that, uh, Hendrik, our uh, inquisitive elf um, friend, loyal to Tyr, did take on the mantle as setting the pace for what the party was up to after you guys deliberated and discussed in the early evenings, in the, in the late evening, sorry, um, to go and head to the Brass Shields patrol house in Old Town of Rackmere, where you investigated some old notes of a case file, which seemed to be that the case was supposed to be ex um, expedited it was a very short um, sentencing process for the accused of stealing a silver urn, a smuggler, a man named Slate, who stole some urn, was um, pointed at and found, found he maintained his innocence, was sent to Vard. And this was nine years ago. Now, the following up from that, um, Hendrik directed you guys to head back towards the Sanctum of Ash, where you'd previously attended a funeral the day before. Um, to talk to him or send you dais to investigate the actual location of the theft. These um, silver urns which are stolen from deep within the crypts um, where people have their loved ones entombed, put into iron, metal, sometimes even clay uh, urns and kept there as is funeral custom within the Concord. So now, after following and seeing some of the security measures in place, Marcinio talking to you guys as you have headed down into the crypts beneath, a maze-like warren of multiple twists and turns, you've came into a circular alcove containing the eight urns of encased in silver, beautifully made, um, definitely something that would be of value to someone who wanted it as a display piece or as an art artifact. And you're in this alcove with Marcini Udias underneath the Sanctum of Ash. And what do you guys get up to? Um, we had that uh, secret passage outside that led from the wall to the fountain. Yes. Um, yeah. Why well, don't the first thing we do is just gonna look around for secret passages in this chamber itself. <laughs> Okay, you want to look at like the the alcoves and the, the walls, walls and and yeah. yeah, the ceiling too. You can't trick me. All right. Okay. Uh, so investigation, you... I guess. Yeah, investigation. You've got a bright torch light, so no disadvantage. Cool. All right. Thirteen. So as you're looking around, and you probably got like a utensil or feeling around, uh, Marcini Odias, um, kind of like after a few uh, moments, gets a sense of what you're doing. And um, he says, um, despite the nature of the theft, there there was no uh, there was no discovery made for an alternate path. The your companions and uh, priests at the Brass Shields did check over and over with a lot of the tunnel systems, and they were unable to find any exits that they would have taken, except for the main one in the actual uh, mm -hmm. sanctum. It, itself. And if there were secret passages, you'd be the person to know about them? Of course, but I am unaware of any passages that do not contain, that would be different from containing the crypts. Yes, the crypts are very old, and our records of some of the oldest layers um, are in frequent need of being reassessed and recartographed, but those are, how would I put this, our time here, my time here as Ashkeeper has been one to shore up all duties. And ever since the theft, I've taken it right upon myself to, again, step up. And I have poured over 
many, many accounts and talk to the oldest of the acolytes, even retired ash keepers and family members who have been down here, who have not conducted themselves in the most befitting way to, as a Valen priest, who might have used it for nefarious purposes, and not from a place of pointing fingers or judgment, but to find out any other reasons or opportunities or motives why this theft happened. And I came up short. I wasn't able to find anything for my shame to Vela and yes, but I did search very earnestly and so did your priests and so did the brass shields, but it was not enough. It would seem unusual for them to be stolen for their monetary value. Um, these are certainly worth a great deal, but it is mm. There are easier targets if that was their game. Of course. I mean, if you were to perhaps uh, pilferage some barrels of fine wine of the Matilla kind or take on something else from the Ministry of Magi Ma uh, Masterworks, that would be more probably time effective. And uh, it's a difficult case, to be sure. Um, the one that was missing, I mean, they were a knight from the uh, I'm sorry I can't remember but it's, there's something past I haven't got the map up there. Sacred Bastion yeah Sacred Bastion yeah um got that one were they were all of these from that same battle and location yes all of all of the knights here that passed their remains were prepared for their great honors they performed at Eliza's Gap um, and he gestures and you can see that on the sides of the um, silver urns you can see all of the names there of the knights um, and I will post them there in D&D &D notes. Okay. Yeah they're all sacred bastions. Sorry uh, this was the thing because we had it last I think if I remember they this was from before there was a sacred bastion, wasn't it? This, this, yeah, this was like their. It was like they were posthumously finding. inducted yes. into it yes. because that's what created their that's their order. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So um, yeah, and like the 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 silver work, the the conditions that these urns are kept in there, they're as best that could be presented, um, bar it being a crypt. You know, they're as you know, well cared for as they can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the missing one is uh, Nicholas Pajero. Um, I think you might have told us this, but uh, who was the battle against? Uh, in the, I think last session I talked about it was against like um. Eastern shaman dark art cultist from the waste to the east. Ah, uh, pagans, okay. Yeah. Yeah, who wielded like the forces of evil, hence why there is now an ever burning holy flame of heaven step uh, guarding the. Is death. there a name for them? Uh, I feel like yeah. That's all make, you a, need. make a history check. Yeah, sure, fair enough. Not had advantage. Wow! Ooh. natural twenty. Okay, yeah. I mean, you studied. You studied. Um, you know that the this this evil force that came to attack um, from that gap from the desolate badlands, um, they were led by a necromantic tyrant called the um, Umbral King. Is he dead? He was slain by Eliza, yes. Necromancy yeah, is a is a evil, a scourge. Um, it is also something that has seldom happened within hundreds of years within the Holy Lands of Erith. And who, who, I'm sorry, who slew, who slew him? A Eliza, the saint herself. Eliza the saint, okay. That's the way the story goes, anyway. How, how long ago was this? Uh, nearly 600 years ago. 1018. Thank you. Yeah, 1018. 
And this wall of fire, is this one of those because kind of, it can happen? Is it like only evil and fiends and undead and whatever is affected, or is it like it burns everyone who gets close? Or it would burn everyone who gets close, but if okay, a fiend or a, a creature of ill intent were to get closer, the flames grow in intensity and out and outperform and really send up a, a kind of signal, like a signal flare that something's approaching. Okay, um, so it's, yeah, it hits everyone, but them especially. Yes, unlike, okay. you know, the uh, the Azamar, um, the god chosen who can get closer than other races. Oh, yay. Good to know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so you are you are here. Um, and, uh, yeah, and Marcinio is is um, just observing your investigation, and is is you know he seems quite intent to to be here, and it doesn't seem like he's bored or upset that you're taking an interest in the investigation from his body language. What's uh, what's Torkel doing amongst all this? Um, he's probably just looking through or looking over the room. Oh shit! Um, I don't think. Or as muted as. I was telling people look around and no one did anything. I'm like, ah, oh, goddamn it! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're okay. Yeah, if you want to tell people to look around, that's fine. Yeah. Let's look around. Yeah, I'll keep looking around then. Sure. Yeah. Why don't you guys give me um, investigation checks or per- or perception checks? Oh, well, one of those two, I'm definitely going to take over the other. <laughs> is that because one of them is int based? Yes. One's minus two, one's plus four. <laughs> investigation check. You were saying? <laughs> it's still plus four. It's bad, but it's plus four. Out of sheer curiosity, please roll an investigation. <laughs> okay, I'm going to roll investigation just to see. I really hope it's a nat yeah. 20. Oh, <laughs> a oh, so for, I think for for Thora, um, wait, you rolled twice? Uh, uh, the, the investigation was just to <laughs> see. Yeah. Uh, well, just, 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 a, just a joke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No problem. Um, so for, for Thora, um, I think that just for yourself, it's just it's cramped quarters. It's an alcove here under the ground. You have not done a lot of this. You're not used to being above, uh, so deep below ground. You're just a little bit like, I'm a big man. I'm in a heavy armor. This feels uncomfortable. Um, Torkel, I just think that you're so disinterested from the whole thing because of the recent conclusions you find in deciphering your old companion's notes. Mm-hmm. You've got less of an interest than anyone else in this room at this current moment in time. Um. Yeah, and Loranic, are you doing anything in particular? Um, I would probably imagine he's actually going to just be probably paying his respects to the the urns that are still there at the minute. Mm-hmm. He's sort of trusting uh, Hendrik to sort of get on with his stuff. He, but they're not have faith in that. It's clearly something else. Like it's not just a, you know, something we've missed. But uh, yeah, he's got some ashes of consecrated knights in front of him. He'll pay some respects. At least that'll be his first instinct is to pay the respects to them. And then afterwards just sort of giving a glance around, I guess. Yeah, yeah, maybe give me a persuasion check perception check. Not persuasion. Not persuasion. persuasion. Yeah. That's like, I want I want to persuade the uh the hmm. room to tell me its secrets. Perception. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, okay. So, you you are doing this kind of like methodical go up to one urn, mutter, you know, 15, 20 second at ease or pair of consecrated rank that you were taught within your order. Um, and you're going around them all, and you get to you get to the last one. You get to Sir Slate. And you look at the urn, and 
you can see because this is quite like a tall alcove it's like it's kind of double lined someone's vibrating i don't know who that is i don't know if it's ryan's mic yeah hey, that's me sorry okay. I, I mute my mic after my cough but i think it's causing problems okay no problem so you are looking around um and you see um almost like buried in between the cobble brick floor beneath you you see just like a, a little it, it's so minuscule a little etch of parchment paper buried in the uh, uh ground um just between the cobbles of the floor itself now we're talking like you've just seen a slight raise of it and i think it's actually when you're doing that that nod of prayer and bowing down you just notice it and then you stare at it and stare at it like that's something and, and as you, you crouch down um, it's incredibly soft fabric of parchment that has definitely um, deteriorated over time. And as you um, carefully, carefully um, lift it up, um, you see that it's only about a few centimetres long by about a centimetre high, and it's got some symbols on it. Okay. Um, when you say symbols, is it like... Yeah. Is it a language if I can tell, or is it just like a map? Um, or so you look at it, do you show it to your allies? <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. He'll be like okay. as soon as he gets yeah. like a better understanding, he's like he'll because he'll yeah. want to look at it first, but then he will yeah. be calling people over. So you show it to your allies to Torkel, um, Thoric, Hendrik, it doesn't mean anything, but to Orly, he looks at it and he says, uh, give it give us that here, Lauren. Like, I I think I can I can let, discern it. Very well, it was just here, and I think you said it was like just in front of the urns, was it, or just in front of the slate urn? Yeah, just in front. this was left just in front of one of the urns. I yeah, I'm assuming it's not like usual for people to pay their respects like that. They wouldn't leave something yeah. written. Marci Marcinio but... becomes involved and says, "No, no, we ask whether anybody has anything to say to their past ones. They say it here in front of them. We do not leave gifts behind. It is not our culture. It is not mm. our way." At least in the south, and um, as Orly looks at it, he kind of gives it gives this kind of shrug and huh. Yeah. It says, "It says I'm sorry, ancestor." What? Um, that reminds me. Who was it that was that was accused of taking it? Some like trader, wasn't it? That was uh, smuggler. Guy. Smuggler. Yeah, the dwarf's name. Yeah. Uh, his name was on the case file. <laughs> Ask my resident cop. Yeah, one second. Slate <laughs> Alagos. Slate Alagos, as in Sir Slate. Galagos. Slate Galagos. That was the person who was. Convicted of the whole thing. There's a smuggler so, convicted of, yeah. So we've got a smuggler called Slate Galagos, and we have in front of this, I'm sorry, Ancestor, is in front of the Sir Slate urn. Um, yeah, correct. Well, he awesome. did very recently get out of prison. I mean, uh, uh, fuck, what do you three, call it? Three years ago. Three years ago, he would have got out of prison. Yeah. If, if he, yeah, if he did return. <laughs> you haven't checked his whereabouts, so yeah. Should we it's go certain, in? It certainly leads to the idea of it being him, but it's also almost too obvious, is it not? But then again, this note has been missed. How was this missed? You look at it, and like you study, missed. you study its locations, you study locations, and. It's extremely fortuitous. Like to anyone else, this would look like some piece of fabric just stuck in amongst the cobbles. But to you, in this moment, yeah. it looked like you wanted to take it out of its filament. It could have been. It could have easily looked like pieces of lint. Okay. Like nothing. It was certainly hidden very well then. Also, it could have been recent. Like after the investigation was already done. Um, I don't. I might ask the um the the caretaker whose name I have written down. 
Marcinio Diaz. Yeah. Um, would you have let this smuggler who has been charged and arrested for stealing from this very place back in here? It is not a is not within the doctrine to disallow someone from honoring their past relatives. But I was unaware, if what you're saying is true, that the smuggler was related to this noble knight. Whether or not he's related is irrelevant right now. What I'm asking is, did you or one of your people let the person who stole these back in here recently? I will check with my acolytes. I cannot That's say that important. it would be important, but it is not a crime to come and honor your ancestors. I know it's not a crime, but it's very, very important whether or not that they have been let in or not. Mm. Because I don't think that this place is as secure as you think. Well, shall we head back and I will confer with my acolytes and see if there is a record of his visits. I Give believe me one more minute. And is there a place to sit, Dean? To sit? Uh, yeah, there'd be a small little corner you can sit down in, yeah. I would like to sit, and I would like to pray. Ooh. Hey, Tyr, I need help. <laughs> Yo, Tyr, your offer? boy needs... <laughs> any, any, any help? <laughs> Tyr? Right. Kind of a so, stand up. Okay, guys, good to go. All right. Okay. So, um, as you're as you're walking, um, and Marcini was leading you out, you, Hendrik, you can hear. You're not sure where you hear it from. It's not made by your allies. It's not a noise. It's it's like interpersonal. It's it's uh, otherworldly. It's just a simple sound of like a a chain on a set of scales, just slowly moving up and down. You and you kind of you can almost like imagine hearing this noise, the weight of of beads pressed on one side of the scale to the other. As as the, the the creaking and whine of it starts to starts to move, and that's that's your sign. That's your assistance. Yeah. Thanks, I rolled dear. a one d one hundred and rolled a one. Wow. So, that's Thanks, dear. Message. Yeah. You're the best. Well, could be the sound of progress, like literally. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe the, 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 the real villain has been struck by lightning. Okay, anyways. Um yeah, let's let's go out. Um the information I really want to know about is if they actually let this guy back in, because that yeah. determines other information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um yeah, all right, so you, you leave and then you um wait in uh Marcinio dies in the office, um, and then he re he returns um, after a few moments. And while he's gone, are you guys uh, talking amongst yourselves or doing anything? Just give me one second. Just going to uh, take this, um, take something off. I'd just like to remind you, Hendrik, that even if it was that individual, it does not necessarily indicate that he he has done wrong. From our understanding oh, of I'm sure he's seeking redemption for a totally innocent act. That may well be the case. We do not have enough information at the moment to necessarily blame him again. People have done wrong, and yeah. I'm not going to throw him in prison for this. Good, but um, it seems strange to me that they would let him back in here, and if they did not, because they have good common sense, then that means he has an alternative way to get in. Say, a secret passage through a water fountain directly outside the premises. 
good I common sense. I don't believe that they have the ability to turn someone away. Uh, well, if they don't, then they're a very weak organization. So I think that they allow anybody to come and good. pray to their ancestors, even if they are an unpalatable sort. It is... If... If people have done wrong in the past, that does not negate their ability to do good in the present and future. We are not talking about a generic good or evil person. We are talking about a person who has committed a crime on these premises against this institution directly. I think that's different. I think that's he, suspicious. Isn't the purpose of his incarceration the punishment? I don't know. I'm not maybe they did lead them back in. I would not be surprised. I mean, maybe. Maybe they have a soft heart. I mean, it's been a decade maybe. or so. Maybe it was... if it was him that stole it, then here is the best place to seek redemption. Let's see. He was sentenced six years ago. Not, he got out three years ago, so it's been nine years. Maybe they just Wait. forgot what he looks like, or he would disguise himself or something. But... So can you no. say that again, those numbers do not add up. He was sentenced, he was sentenced, six years he was ago. sentenced nine years ago when the crime took place. Nine years ago, he served six years. Is what okay. he so it's 15. Is it? No. What? What? No, 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 no. He, he, was, he, he, he got was sentenced nine years, years ago. Yeah, he was in prison six years. He's been free for three years. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just role playing so hard. I'm getting actually dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So um, Marcinio comes back, and immediately you guys can see that um, there's a little bit of a, of a not as optimistic, kindly smile on his face, um, and he returns to his desk and. Uh, he says to the group of you, yes, um, this slate, this Sir Galagos uh, did come by um, recently, in the past few months, to our crypts. It was to, with his wife, um, to honour the remains of uh, a son he had who died during birth. One of his children, uh, I'm told, uh, did accompany him and his wife as well. But that was his reason why, uh, attending with his family. Well, he ended up in that chamber somehow, so I guess we're going to talk to him. Yeah. Um, when people visit, I understand that they may be afforded some time by themselves, but do you know who assisted him? throughout the catacombs. Uh, there's a lot of acolytes here on that specific day. It, it would require some investigation to maybe a day or two for me to track down the exact shift operations. Um, but I cannot tell you exactly in this moment. But you're right, we, we do allow some privacy. But an acolyte is no more than 20 paces from uh, attending for fear of them getting lost or in the throes of grief, becoming disorientated. So if possibly, if this slate did leave his wife or came up here under false pretenses to honor his um, child, which was taken from him and ended up back in that chamber, then that is something that my acolyte must answer for if he allowed that to happen. It would be. You said it's good to talk to the acolyte who assisted him. If he was totally aware of Slate's presence at all times, then it stands to reason that Slate may not have put the you parchment said, within there. Sorry. You said they 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 visited a couple of months ago, was it? Yes. Yeah. On the, anniv Holds, on the anniversary and, of the yeah. child's death, I'm told. How old is that parchment? Can I you said it was it? seriously degraded, didn't you? It was degraded, yeah. You want to take a closer look at it? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Um, oh. It looks old. It 
looks you're a pretty intelligent guy do you know the way when you keep like a piece of paper in like a rucksack or a pocket for like mm-hmm. weeks and months and it just slowly just starts to fray and fall apart it looks like that it looks like it was kept in some well moved pocket or container of a of apparel that for years and years um was uh, uh what would you call it I guess you have it back yeah. It. yeah so it looks like he wrote it and kept it on him for a great deal of time it was like it. crumpled up a bunch yeah. for years yeah I'm just okay um, if you want the date that he attended, just give me one second. If I remember correctly, he in, uh, initially had claimed that he had no knowledge of how the Silver Herbs had been there. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Firstly, we are assuming this is in fact his when. Mm-hmm. It could still just be happenstance and coincidence. It is That's important that we do not take this too far on such uncertain grounds. And secondly, Lernark, I feel like you're trying to convince me not to shoot, like, to execute this man. I assure you, I'm just asking questions. Questions are fine, but. There have been certainly some followers of Tear which are over eager. Tell you what, Lirinok, as soon as I do something that you think is over the line, you let me know. I will. Okay. They have a second week of Vudia. Vudia? Vudia. Who? Vudia. The first Hierophant of Thesmere. It's the name of the month. So that would have been, from your point of view, that would have been about two what? months ago? Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, let's go, let's go uh, fucking execute him. <laughs> Let's go have a conversation. Uh, so, is yours in the city, or do you want to go and try and find uh, go to Slate's home? Yeah, I'm. I'm sure he, his parole records has his address or something. Yeah, you can nip back to the Brass Shields and and find a record of his of his home. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Let's let's do let's do that. Okay, so you're exiting from the Sanctum of Ash. You thank Persinio Dias for for his um his involvement um and his help today, and he thanks you again. And he says that in a few days' time he'll he'll produce um the assisting the acolyte um who saw to slate on that day. Um, and as you leave uh, Old Town and pass the memorial field. Um, and head towards the Brass Shields, get your information. Um, you see that um, Slate's family home is in the northern part of um, Rachmere, uh in the residential area, a few streets up from Nathaniel's home, a few blocks, mm. sorry, I should say. So um, you journey through there. Um, the As you head out, the weather um, today is uh is that of um a quite fine um cool bit of a breeze um there's a light mist again on some of the areas outside of the city it's between um 11 and 11 and 13 degrees so comfortable enough thank you so you you head towards um his home and uh it's starting as you get towards there you can see that the home is definitely more the homes in this part of of the city are definitely less well maintained and as proper as they're on the center where the bed of roses are and closer to sanson square and you follow directions and you see a one-story house with no balcony um no second story 
um, it has what I've, the remains of one half of the house would have been stone, whereas in the other parts of it are now wooden. Um, ad hoc added to half shanty, half still maintained um, structure. Attempted the wood has been attempted to be painted the same color as the yellow stone, um, and uh, you can see quite a mess of um, crates and empty barrels outside of um, the front of the house. So, so how, how well off is this? Uh, how, I think I've seen this now, but like, how well off is this, like, his house and the neighboring houses and stuff like that? The, the neighboring house is definitely slightly better. This is probably, this is probably the worst house in this particular oh, row. you broke up there. Houses. This, this house is definitely the worst in the row of houses. Mm, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. Um, I will go knock. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you walk up and boom, boom, boom. The door, the latching of the door itself is actually slightly loose. So each time you knock the door, it suddenly moves an inch, an inch inward, because the the lock and the musterings have been so heavily let go. So mm. you you knock the door, um, and you hear a, a woman's voice from the inside. And uh, says, um, who is it? Your friendly neighborhood government official. I'm here to ask Mr. I pull my like binder and uh, let's go through the fucking names and oh, okay. Gal, Gal, Gal. Uh, Slate, Mr. Slate. <laughs> I'm gonna turn ask to Learnock and I'm gonna turn to Learnock and Zork and like. Go around, go around the back of the house. Make sure it doesn't run out the back. Hmm. And you guys just yeah, stand no. there, or yeah, no, it's not, not, no, it's not moving. He's, he's, the man has done his crime. I'm not going to treat him like a criminal at the moment. Thork. Hello. What's Thork doing? Does Thork follow the instructions or no? Uh. He looks at Torkel. Yeah, Torkel nods. Okay, Thork is going to go. All the instructions. Okay. All right. You, as you nip around the back of the house, um, she just repeats the question. Uh, oh, what was the question? I was, I was like, having an argument with Lernock. He's like, for what purpose do you want to see my husband? About the crime. Um, we are following up on the investigation. We have no intention of doing anything toward the moat yet. As no you're in the midst of, of continuing that conversation, the front door slams open and you see um, a woman um, standing there enraged in her face. Um, she is has dark clay-like skin, like cracked features, um, this long braided... Um, uh, like dreadlock like hair and she shouts in the face of you Hendrix you have some nerve coming here you damn officials of fear you took my husband away from me for six years now you come here asking him more questions he served six years down in, hey, that in the Mr. middle of this in the yeah. middle of your tirade I, I cast mage armor <laughs> okay yeah, you cast you cast a spell um yeah so she just starts screaming and cussing you out and saying he doesn't have to answer you he served his time and just shouting and leering at you and pointing a finger um and it's at this point we see thoric door in the back of the house and there's a small little girl um probably about um five years old playing um with some little ruined um wheels they look like old wagon wheels that are like cracked and she's hammering little nails into them and stuff and um as you come in the corner thoric she um, looks up at you and she looks um, again this kind of cracked clay like um, texture a dull muddy complexion to her skin her hair is much shorter um, and uh, she looks kind of quizzically at you um, uh, that kind of kid like she's holding a hammer in her left hand she kind of drops it by her side hello hi hi I'm trying to fix this wheel. That's good. Is your dad home? Uh, 
And then at that point, then you just hear shouting on the other side of the building. And the girl like, like just looks a bit worried and confused and just runs inside the open door to the back of the house. I mean, that's fine. Thoric wasn't asked mm-hmm. to go into the back of the house. Just make sure he doesn't leave the back of the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, with this disturbance, with this, let's take a quick 10-minute break so I can eat my dinner, and then we'll come back oh, for the intensity mm-hmm. of this Good. moment. Wow, mm-hmm. she's, been sh- she's shouting at him for 10 minutes? <laughs> Everybody in the is just laughing. <laughs> this, this woman's uh, yeah. taking him to task. Okay. Yeah, also, Lerok is doing the same thing. She is well within her rights to be mad, so... Not stopping it. Oh fuck, dude! I had to arrest a fucking a pregnant lady on Mother's Day for uh, being drunk in public, and she would not stop yelling. You had to, or you chose to. What do you mean I had? I, I was I was compelled by my position within society, like all of us are. And she would arrest the mother on Mother's Day. Yeah, it was it was funny afterwards. <laughs> I'm sure not for her. Well, maybe she shouldn't be drunk in public. Yeah. And yelling at people. Oh, his buddy drunkards. Was she being racist? Huh? Was she just being generally unpleasant? Um, she was just yelling at some guy. I always find that public order offences are always really funny. Because they just I mean, most of the time, most of the time, we just don't care. Like, it's fine. People can be yeah. a bit tipsy, but when you're, like, trying to start a fight with people on the sidewalk, and it's, like, 12, it's, like, midday, and you're shit-faced, and you're also a pregnant lady who, if you can do a fight, is going to cause issues, like, nah. That just sounds, like, normal to me. What are you talking about? Some people just need a, a rest a rest day. <laughs> Did you realize that she was a pregnant mother before or after you took out your baton? He he no, took the, no. he took out the baton because she was a pregnant lady. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was one of the ones I talked into the, it, it uh, Listen, you don't wanna like get on the news, so that was one of the people I talked into the police car. It's a very but good it was not fun because we were just in a very bad mood and would not stop fucking I yelling why. for like 10 minutes. Well, I don't know. Maybe she has some life issues. Yeah. I'd be bad. I'd be in a bad mood too if I was a pregnant lady. Uh, yeah, to, to be fair, so would I. Especially, you know, Mother's mm-hmm. Day probably brought out some stuff. Oh, man. I'm cooking a full chicken, full roast chicken. I'm so okay. excited. I can't. I don't think we. I don't think we charged her. I think we just like put her on detox. Or, yeah, the uh, drunk tank. The drunk tank. Yeah. Incarcerated. <laughs> Is it really surprising think, like, the amount of people who don't know the difference between like jail and prison? Hmm. I oh, mean, yeah. if they're never going to go to one, I I kind of understand them not really caring about the yeah. specific. Uh, I, I guess you don't need to, but. You know. I was showing Ryan before, uh, Sean, uh, this thing called the Bola Wrap that certain police departments in the US are are using. It's like a gun, but worse. The Bull Wrap? A Bola Wrap. Bola. Oh, Bola Wrap. Um, is that like the thing that like wraps around your legs? Yeah. 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 But it's in like gun form, so you shoot it at people. What is it with the US and everything being gun related? It's like that. Well, it's, one, it's like that one I mean, cultural thing. Fine, it's crossbow shaped. Damn Europeans and your crossbows. Uh, what do you fall? Anyways, uh, I think my first response to Souls was like, oh, thank God I wouldn't have to run as much. Yep, that was pretty much it. Because, <laughs> guys, running after people when you're like Kevlar and like your vest and shit it sucks. I imagine it's a very, uh, a very enjoyable situation to have to chase. No, it's, probably, it's, it's probably the worst part of the job. Um, yeah, I, st- I think it was in the same conversation. I was complaining about that, and I was talking about how, like, I got really good at running to the point where I like black out mid stride, just because I was like, I got so used to just pushing myself. That's <laughs> I'd rather them just pull a knife on me, honestly, than run. That shit sucks. <laughs> 
the only thing I remember about playing into like, the US cop sort of like um, stereotype that you don't want to run. You'd mm-hmm. like you'd rather have someone throw a knife on you than run. Yeah. <laughs> no, fuck that. Because, okay. Maybe Let's put all that equipment on you, and then you have to outrun someone who wants to like escape going to prison for ten years. Like, sure, it's not like a physical test though. Um, get a job? No, no, there is. It still sucks. Okay, okay, that's fair. Because <laughs> you have to want to catch that person more than that person wants to not go to prison, which is hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think I want. <clears throat> A lot of things more than I want to not go to prison. So yeah, yeah, they're really motivated. Speaking of knives, that's quite, quite a good motivation. Speaking of knives, the only thing I really remember about you know growing up is like, oh, in a knife fight, <laughs> the winner dies in the ambulance, the loser dies on the street. Yeah, we actually had a knife fight where it was like a, it was like a thirteen-year-old kid or something like that attacking another thirteen-year-old kid. London, London. Excuse me. No, San Diego. Oh. What? What? I'm saying nice I've never been to the UK. Yeah. Okay, but this story has a funny ending. Um, I hope uh, so. it was like they it was like a gang it. initiation thing. So it was like Crip blood bullshit. Um, I think it was a, it was a blood on to- a blood who like tackled this kid, pulled a knife, and like started swiping. Um, and then there's like. He was my partner or whatever. It was like getting coffee or some shit. Um, and he tackled the, the kid with the knife, right? No one died. My um, name frame used to be pretty bad in like Glasgow in the surrounding area. My dad got attacked by a machete once, which was quite quite a good story. Guy, two guys jumped out of a taxi at a bus stop and attacked him and my uncle with a machete, which was quite weird. Yeah. And so he, he lost his finger. He had a... Um, had a rugby injury, so his ring finger on his right, uh, no, his right hand, maybe his right hand, um, like he put up to like block the machete, um, or well, did like stop the person from hitting him in the head, and just they just cut off like his finger from the mm, second knuckle almost, and then he used to tell me stories when I was growing up that he like <laughs> one of them was he caught it in a washing machine door. I was like, what the fuck. That's or the, the, um, our, uh, the my granddad's dog had bit off and stuff like that. That's pretty funny. Honestly, always, the machetes are pretty scary, yeah. yeah. I always wear a knife on my belt, and I'm always so scared that some fucking Karen, if I accidentally forget to take it off going into the shop, is going to ring the police on me. Because in the UK, it's legal to carry a knife, basically. Yeah, it's a crime. So, I think the so. maximum sentence is like three years. In I Scotland I'll, as well. I'll, I'll but I think I'll, any copper would be like, all right, okay. You work with knives. You need it for your job. Just chuck it in the car next time. Yeah, that, yeah that's that John thing. If you're going, if you're going to or from work, yeah, that requires it. It's... Yeah, unless you got like a psychopath, cops don't want to like bother decent folk who aren't actually committing a crime. I think it's um, it depends where you are. Because if you're in yeah. Abernathy and the Highlands and stuff like that, there's more of a, it a keeper somewhere and a interpretation and a that they should yeah. need that knife but if you're in glasgow like if you're in the center of glasgow you're not going to need that you don't need to be out in public with a knife on you yeah. well, it's it, like a man it, it's a mandatory it's it's one thing. of those things of let's say let's say you're a builder and you use you use a knife just to let's say score plasterboard then you go you, you you get in your car you go drive you stop off in the shop to pick up a drink at that point a, a placement stops you it's like even in the middle of Glasgow, that's still a good reason to have a knife on you. It's it's entirely up to discretion. It's always discretion. And sometimes yeah. the cops can be like, yeah, this is reasonable. I well, it's this. probably not in a fucking police office anyway to catch you. It'd be like an hour and a half delay so you could just drive home. Anyway. Right, sorry, I just had to quickly scoff my pasta and my garlic bread, so 
that's that's me now back to role playing as an angry woman who um is screaming so um you saw yes. a bowie knife that's literally the worst thing for hunting <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you I, throw it it'll take down a deer i right this is unrelated i once took out a guy who was training to be a deer stalker and he had a oh, what's that knife called? um not a fair burn a k bar in a k bar knife thinking he was hot <laughs> shit but the knife was too big to growl like the stag so it was like it was great it was great for like the, the bleeding part and that was what good but but to actually growl like the stag he like had to basically put to I'll, there's a video on it but anyway you cut the knife between two fingers or the tip you cover the tip of your finger and you just go up so you only need like a three inch blade or two and a half inch blade really to do it but this guy had like a six seven and a half inch blade so he had to leave K-bar. He had listen a K-bar. k-bars are good knives but they're not for butchering animals <laughs> No, he, well, and I, I mean it's a knife. I feel like cutting yeah. wood with it, shit. Yeah, well, exactly. His he was in the infantry in the Scots Guards, so that was his actual um issue knife. Oh, that's... oh funny. And, Re- wait, and, really? Oh, shit. Yeah, and I, I was like, uh, I was like, you need to get an actual Gralican knife. This fucking trying to look macho stuff with a big knife just makes you look really dumb. Mm. Anyway, is everyone ready? No, the K bar was like a common knife. So. Yeah, it's used on the L eighty five as a bayonet, I think. Um. Oh, Listen, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. I have to Google it. Anyway, yeah, um, so so yes, so um, continuing on as Hendrix getting dressed down for this woman who's describing that, you know, and you've cast mage armor on yourself. She's basically just pointing a finger at you, and then she like reaches behind the door, and there's um, some like uh rolled up rags, and she's just throwing rags at your face. Just like mm-hmm. dirty linen, just like no, the get out of here. Get out of the witch up to you. <laughs> yeah. So how do you react, um, Hendrick? I'm gonna look back at Lyranok and see how Lyranok's taking this. She's just quite mellow, actually. He's quite yeah. letting it happen because in fact, she's well within her rights. She's done nothing wrong. All her attention is on Hendrick. She has not even looked at any of you guys in the eyes. She's just locked on Hendrick. And just and just cussing him out and swearing at him and taking taking um Valen's name and honor, taking Kinos, there's just all the swell swears for all twelve gods, just cur- cur- cursing him out. So now that we're closer, then I will be looking at the house really. So because you just mentioned that this is like the worst in the area, right? Yeah. Like it's, I'm really curious, like what's is it just like a case of it's falling apart or uh, it looks to be like one wing of the house potentially damaged, and then they've tried to rebuild it with wood. But it doesn't look like the damage is super easy. It looks like it's been like wooden reinforced for a while. But I'm pretty sure I'm assuming that rebuilding your house to this level probably isn't on. Well, is, it, is it still on the owner at that point, or could you go and is there? Like... It would be on the owner. Obviously, you can go and yeah. ask for assistance from the church of Kinos, but that might be beyond beneath some people, or they might, or the church might not have the time. Um, so yeah, so she she finishes with her laundry, um, throwing them at you, and uh, she shouts back. She shouts back. Um, uh, Camilla, get inside! And the little girl's voice comes back, like she was like, "I am, Mama." And um, she looks at you, Hendrik, points finger. You stay away from my house. And then gets behind the door, and slams it shut. Well, that went well. Yes, it seems as though she was quite upset on this to the imprisonment of her husband. If you guys want to go and do other things for a while, I'm going to just sit here for a while until Mr. Slate shows up. I get the feeling he's not here right now. Possibly mm. not. Um, and, oh, right, yeah. It's like the middle of the day, right? Uh, well, yeah, it's about like, coming up to midday. Yeah, coming up to midday. Yeah, which means he's, he's very it's likely probably to be work. at work. That's fine. And DM, you said there were um, like empty barrels and stuff? And crates? There's empty barrels. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it, it looks like... Into a seat. Sure. Yeah, you up to upturn uh, uh, a small co- a small wooden crate like a planter box, and you pop it down into the seat. Yeah. There are, um, uh, just sit down and wait. 
the um the neighbor houses are they are these is this a is this a fully detached house or a semi detached house? It's a semi detached there's a terrace of houses. Okay. Can I knock on the neighbor's door? Yeah, yeah. Um a young man opens it, looks about sixteen, fifteen. Um and looks I uh, can I help you? Uh, good evening, not uh, afternoon. Um we are looking to talk to your neighbor but it does not appear that he is home. Do you happen to know where he may work or? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> the gallery was his, uh, the husband, he's a fixer. He, he works at the front of the house, fixing up all pieces of shit from the, from the farms, barrels, crates, all that kind of shit. Okay. And is there perhaps um, a tavern or the team may frequent? No, no, he's uh, he's a sober man. From what I said, it's the it's the woman. She's she's the degenerate, the gambler, the drinker. Yeah, I see. Okay, so he works at home then. Uh, I appreciate the help. Thank you. W wait, are you looking for Slit? We would like to talk to him. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, he's not here. He went uh, all. Damn neighborhood for for shouting him out when he left. He went to go and try and find the Herculean twins. The Herculean twins. Well, the last name is Hercule. Uh, yes, uh, one of the shop owners up the street, quite well known woman, Carolyn. Her two uh, kids went off with a party uh, during the Everstorm. They never came back. She put a few speakers up and around in this part of town. Said she'd offer a big reward to anybody who found it. I don't think Slate could turn down the money if he brought them back. I see. Mm. So like he is now out of town looking for these people? Seems to be. He hasn't came back. He left a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. so, I appreciate the information. That woman's been insufferable. He seems to be having a hard time. Yes. Well, she's even worse when she's sobered up, crying, moaning. Poor girl growing up in a house like that. Father isn't around. And mother's a drunkard. I'm sorry. What the fuck did you just say? Did you just. Okay, maybe I misheard it. Did you just imply the child is an alcoholic and screaming? No, the, the, no, mother, the mother. No, the mother is. Okay, she's. You, okay. I'm not crazy though, right? Because I heard like she's yeah, worse when she's. You're, you're not okay. crazy. You're the only person that took it that way. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I mean, you uh, you met. Sorry, was it the Hercule twins? It's one of their uh, children were missing. The the Herculean twins are missing, and a woman named Carolyn put out cries. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. Okay. The mother. Um, I mean, we should go and speak to this person then. No matter what, even without it, if the pe if there are, I'm mean, just like looking like, like children. I'm um, he's assuming, I mm. like. You're not sure, but not sure. to well, but to assume the information on my Torkel relays this information to you guys. Yes. For children to leave during the Everstorm, that is unconscionable. So they must be adults okay. or young adults. Oh, that would be like, yeah, the, the Everstorm okay. is a proper weather event. It's dangerous. Yeah. So. I mean, even still, it's, if there are people yeah. missing, it is on us. We should provide aid however we can. Why would the... Is it Hercule? Hercule, yeah. yeah. I'll Why type would the these Hercule first. twins leave on the Everstorm if they, like all the same people, understand how dangerous it can be? It could Was be there any issue? Echo. Sorry. Hukro. 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 Yeah. Could, could be mere desperation. If they are yeah, right. hunters or gatherers or anything of the sorts. Oh, I was asking. Oh, sorry, is the, is the little guy boy? Are we back? Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, you want to ask him? Oh, I yeah, sorry. I meant to like address yeah. him and say, like, just in case there was like any rumors or anything like that that they'd had to yeah. fall out or they were yeah. going to seek oh, some yeah. kind of like treasure. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. He nods. Um, and he still he actually leans the door open a bit more. Um, you see, he looks like a like he looks like a just a cl classic young worker, young teenage worker. Um, he says, "No, no, no. They're they're 
they're well taken care of. Carolyn, their mother, runs a good business. She provides most of the food, um, hires a lot of uh, trade teams and teamsters, do a lot of fruit picking, all that stuff. Um, they're pretty well off. I know that the two of them are turning to try and do something with their lives, something with swords and spells and all those things from in the churches. I thought the boy wanted to go and be a bastion, go and work at the bastion, go and be a Templar. But uh, I, I'm not sure. The girl, she's pretty enough, nice enough. I've only seen her around a few times, but it was a bit commotion uh, when they left during the Everstorm. They took a team, a few other traveled people, adventurers type maybe. They wanted to go and uh, pilfer some ruins south of the town. That's as much as I know. I am, I like my comfortable life and I like keeping my job for with Kellowin and being a teamster. So I'm not going to speak too much. You may as well go speak with her yourself. I appreciate your help. I am sorry to have disturbed you. Thank you for your assistance. It's fine. Thank you very much. And God's be with you, please. Kianos be with you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he well, closes the door. Yeah. Well, it looks like our man has disappeared south of town, and we may as well go and try and assist him. It will be two birds in one stone. The Hendrik, do you concur? Am did I hear this overhear this conversation? It was. Uh, I would say you could overhear it, yeah, because like the woman and there's no noise coming from inside, and it's a semi-terraced house, so the conversation was only about fifteen feet away. So you yeah, did an there. inside check yeah. on what that that youngster just boy. said. Yeah, sure. the boy. Yeah, the boy. Uh, boy. Boy. Sure. Advantage. Boy. Twenty. 20. Um, you get the sense that <laughs> kid was loving, like loving the attention he was getting from like a priest, and like um, quite enjoying the conversation. But he had this scornful look when he looked at you sitting inside the house, not towards yourself, but just towards the house and, and like yeah. that that rundown mess. Does not like a lot of this. And a lot of disdain for the for the occupants of that house at the time. Okay. Surprised it's on the truth then. Okay, sounds good. Um Okay, Torkel. I think you're right. Let's go and find him. Do... Lorinox a somewhat well travelled person at this point. Does he know about any rooms to the south? Make a history check. Okay. I assessed him in that I did study quite well. You did, yeah. Um, you can so assist. if the ruins were of any like old or like temples or anything like that, hopefully you would have been able to know. Yeah, yeah, please do. So, give me advantage mm -hmm. if you want. Uh, yeah, you have advantage. Have a plus okay. four to history though if you want me to roll about it. Don't know. It might be best for you to do it. I'm going to have plus zero. All right, I'll roll the history check. With it, and I will. Oh, well, actually, yeah. Fifteen. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll lie this time. It was already rolled. Oh, okay. um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So yeah, so there there is there is a ruin um couple days across the across the dry run river um outside of Rachmere. Um it's called the Sunless Citadel. Um as much mm -hmm. as you know about it, uh as much as you know about it, it was um a ruin built to honor some uh some local creature. Um and you know it was destroyed by the Hierophant of Talos. All right. Yeah, I'm imagining calling something sunless in this country, whatever, probably isn't really a good yeah. thing when with one a, of their major 15, gods is a sun. When, with a 15, you know the sunless citadel is called that because it basically fell into the earth from the destruction of the Hierophant. Ooh. That's why it's called the sunless citadel, because it's now in the underground. Down to a deep uh, ravine. Yes, I need to go AFK for like two minutes. No problem. Um, I will relay that to the. Oh, Jesus. I'll relay that to the party. Well, it does not matter. We should be on, We should go and search. If this is indeed is where these twins and perhaps uh, this uh, Slate, or this Mr. Slate is, then we should be go and be of any assistance that we can provide. I concur. These people may need help, and we can provide this. Mm. Uh, yeah. It may be it... worth speaking to this merchant. Uh, so I'm sorry, I can't. I did not get the name, but the uh, uh, Carowin. Carowin. Be worth speaking to this Carowin. But 
it could also be worth going. Every moment we are waste here, there is potential danger. Sure. I think we're agreed. We oh um does is there somewhere we would know where we can get like a map of this surrounding area? Uh yeah, there'd be a I local think. cartographer guild. Yeah, yeah, you could try that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How f I just wanna wear this. How far south is is it like a couple days journey days. or is it like it'd it would be days, days is it? Okay. Yeah, you'd be leaving yeah. the time proper. I'm, okay, then, I'm yeah. th saying that south of the Dry Run River, you're already looking at like 60 miles at least just to get to the other side of the bridge on the Scan Short, the Sun Scorch Road. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that is actually quite a distance then. So it's um, south of the Sun Scorched Road on the map or south of the Dry Run River? South of the Dry Run River and then east again in those. Uh, you would know probably based it's like it's like somewhere between where the slumbering river and the dry run river meet somewhere below that okay yeah so um three four days probably roughly three four days and so the winds went uh during the storm right yes which is very bad omen that is not mm -hmm. a good sign it's very interesting to it. uh, uh so the Everstorm's challenge, the end of that is the first of this month. So that was yeah. 11 days. The Everstorm is over now within the beginning of the new year. Yeah. So they went during it. So we're looking at what, like two weeks maybe. Yeah. So they've... Technically speaking, they might not actually be missing at this point. Because if it's, let's say, a six-day journey, there and back is almost two weeks. And they've been gone six days. Is it, how long did we say they've gone? Sorry, you're not sure how long exactly they've been. Ah, okay. Yeah, we know. We only know it was during the storm. And when is that storm actually considered? I, I assume we're like de um, deducing, deducing this as we walk. Yeah, I imagine. Um, so. Yeah. so when abouts was, is does it the storm considered to have started? Like sometimes when it, some years yeah. it starts a few days early sometimes it oh okay a few so it's, days not, late. it's not like an actual start date then. no it's it's okay. it's a it's a geographical um sorry it's it's an event yeah, yeah, it's a weather event which is across yeah. all of Aerith for around a period of a month so okay. like in the north you get like virulent violent um floods and snowstorms in the south you get um tornadoes and firestorms yeah yeah so it basically roughly Start of uh, Wigwaville. Yeah, Wigwaville. Yeah, and then it ends at the end of Wigwaville. Yeah, like give or t give like give or take. Yeah. There's um, there's like some historical record of it once lasting six weeks, which is like really bad. Yeah, that's probably when a lot of people are like, oh god, there's not enough prayer to tell us. Let's build some yeah. more churches and idols. <laughs> yeah, okay. So and um, but slight went uh, a few when, days ago. A few days ago. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we should still. See if we can help out on the, the twins, but the base we've got slate. But no matter what, we're going to go and see if we can help. Well, this Larry Rock absolutely 100% is. People are potentially in danger. Must go help. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, so... I think we've actually got enough. Do we? Well, go everyone. To Carolyn. We should probably um, call back Thoric as well before we leave. Oh yeah, yeah. The Thoric is there, <laughs> just like intensely watching the back of the house for it. Make a perception check, please, for me, Thoric, while while your allies are doing all this. Alrighty, uh, perception sixteen. So you're not like too far away, but you can hear like some sobbing inside, and then like the little girl like making some noise, and then some like gaps in the sobbing and stuff like that. Um, and that's as much as you can hear. I'll be preparing onions for dinner. Mm. <laughs> Are you okay, Sean? No, that just tickled me for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm good to go. Yeah, I'll call yeah. I'll um, call um, Thoric back. I'm going to head out. I'll head south. We, did we decide if we wanted to go and talk to that woman? I don't think we need to, and I think people are in danger, so we should probably go as soon as possible. Like... Mm. Sure, I'm a Lernog. 
Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's head. Like, uh, where, where, Stop traveling, actually, so. do we, actually, good point. Would we even know where she is? Uh, I mean, you could ask that kid again, or you could. Uh, um, he's he, could he, he said that she was like some shop owner up the street. If if it's up the street, we could just go and ask her. You know what? Yeah, she's up the street. Pa- she's not, it's not lethal. Really like, if we were exiting in the town, would we pass that way anyway? Uh, no, you it's well, the um, up the street. Um, no, but the street ends in like a block or two, so um. But if you're going to leave the town, that's you're going to leave, you're going to head all the way south through the uh, through yeah. here and leave. Then we're going through like the merchant district and things. But like, it could be just be worth getting a bit more information because, as far as we know, they're going to, like, according to the kid, they're going to this room. But we don't know for certain. Mm. So I think we should, uh, no one. We should go speak to her first. We shouldn't. Like, Sorry, if, is that what you said? I think so. Okay, let's get just going. Potentially, see if we can get more information because you know, just a simple thing. Yeah, hand. and it's not like it's a massive detour. It's what, it's like a couple of minutes, maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, you head up the street and um, you come round into what seems to be like a um, kind of workman's area, like an importer's kind of um, material store. And you see, it's there's a sign that's, that's like her cool family family business. It's called Wanderers Wonders. A fantastic choice, not wordy at all. Ooh, Wanderers, Wanderers, Wanderers Wonders. Wanderers Wonders. Wonders. Yeah, and you see like people outfitting wagons, wagons with barrels in it. You can see like other various supplies, um, food supplies, green supplies, um, just a whole mess and there's probably like 20 or 30 people working in this yard moving logs and sticks and heavy supplies and soil and earth and all this stuff as well um and then you can see like the outside of the the outside of the store um it's about quite long it almost looks like a quite long sink like a like a like 80 foot long with a big front door and then the back right hand side there's like an open plan into a yard where like wagons roll in and roll out of it kind of a medieval warehouse um, I think I will just go up and speak to one of the workers. And yeah. Just... Good afternoon. We are looking to speak to Carolyn. Her... Sorry, is it her cruel? Carolyn her cruel, yeah. Her cruel. Okay, I'm just trying to get this, this pronunciation. Yeah. Just looking to speak to Carolyn her cruel. She... He he nods and and oh. uh, yes, uh, yes, godly one. Um, she's in the back office in the house itself. Uh, sorry, not this, in the workshop. Good. May we enter? Uh, yes, yes. She'll be keen to see someone like yourself. It'd be good tidings for her heart. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, and actually, now that you know that someone's in danger, like, Lurinok is very much focused and, like, driving onwards. So he's been very mellow before this. But now he's like, yeah, go, go. Mm. So he's, okay. like, absolutely sort of helping to yeah. leave now. So the, the shingling of your mail and, and all the stuff in your heavy armor, you guys are directed to this office and you see like around the back of the office in like, there's no like a bit of a lumber processing part where they're cuddling lengths of wood and you see the sawing of wood and the banging of hammers uh, as the more wagons are made and like planters and stuff like that as well. Um, and materials for the harvest coming up because it's harvest it's, season um, in the next couple of weeks. In the next still considered months, a so. factory when it's done manually. Mm, I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. know either. I'm really curious because I was going to call it a wagon factory, but I don't know if it's true. Anyway, sorry, off track. Yeah. So um, you see, you see, like the office, the office um, symbol yes. in um, Southern Indian on the on the door. Um. Yeah. Lerner will go up and knock on the door. Yeah. Yeah. You request to speak to Karen Hathul. Come in. Lerner will open the door. You'll leave it open for anyone that feels like coming in, but you're also yeah, not yeah. focusing. Yeah. They do. All right. So you see in front of you um, a short woman. She's about three and three foot six inches tall. She's um, a gnome. She's got a muscular build, like a like a worker's build. She's got like a square face. She's got a piercing and a right eyebrow and very long curled black hair and brown eyes. The face is like someone who's like worked with their worked with their body, worked with their hands a lot of time. She's wearing kind of like like light workers clothes um an apron which is draped over the side of the, of the chair that she's standing just behind of and she seemed to have just been getting up 
um, to, to leave the office and she's you're reaching for a satchel. Um, she, can I help you, God one? Afternoon. We uh, have I, I rather have only just heard about the plight and the your missing twins, I believe. We and we sort of judges the group. We are looking to set off to aid in any way we can, but we are just stepping here to get some more information to see if we have any more concrete answers as to where and what they might be doing. My God, my prayers have been answered. Yes, come in, come in. Thank you, thank you. Yes, this is yes. most welcome. Thank you very much. And she just wish you guys to come inside and she sets the supper down and takes a seat again. How, how did you... Never mind that. Um, yes, my, my girl and my boy, my, my, my sweet children, they're both gone. Um, there's Talgin and, uh, and uh, Shalwin. Tal Talgin and Shalwin? Yeah, I'll, I'll spell it. Please and thank you. I was literally just going, wait, I have a notebook somewhere, but I can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my, my boy and my young girl, they're, they haven't saw 20 summers yet. They're still young. But they are most, most loyal to, to Kalos and, and his ideals and the religious teachings. They sought to impress him by leaving during the Everstorm. And my boy as well wants to become a knight. So he... Sorry, I'm, I'm speaking so out of turn. What no, do you wish to know? Um, yeah, we heard for our, from our information, they were going to speak, or they were looking for these well, sorry, sunless citadel ruins yes, to the south. Yes. Good. Okay. We uh, wanted to confirm the location. It would not be. It would not do well for us to go to the citadel only to find they were not nearby and then going somewhere else. But we, from our understanding, they left during the storm. Do you know when about more specifically? So about a month end, ago. Or... Now they left. So. And like he'll just like not be just sort of you know, so near the beginning of the storm. The yes. Storm. Well, they wanted to wait until the storm was in full effect to grant the most favor with Talos. So they delayed it a few days until the rains really started to come down. Um this is just a not citing her, but is it common? Like is that how what Talos' worshippers do? They go out during these storms? And you one way. If you survive, uh, you're worthy. Yeah, it's like it's not mm. unreasonable for all people who worship storms, but I'm just double checking. Yeah, yeah no, it um, it would be a stupid idea for anybody, but if you're a Talos worshiper and you wish to prove yourself, like prove your medal, prove your ability, this would be something that would be common. Yeah. Okay. Oh. A common ideal, maybe not a common practice. Okay, it's like it's not unreasonable for them. It's, to, it's still not like stupid. Pay, it's, a, it's a bad it's idea, stupid. but it's hey, this yeah. last, hey. Religion in a nutshell, right? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Well, good. Thank you very much for providing us that. Um, I will not claim that it is a smart choice to go out during this storm, especially. Uh, how bad was this year's storm? Like, was it particularly bad or particularly not bad? Or uh, uh, from what you've heard heard in the papers and your only areas, yeah. really bad floods in the south. Um, some towns are washed away. Um, really, really strong winds on the on the coastal lines. Um, some ships were were sunk and blown blown run aground and blown inland. Um, bad bad um snowfall in the mountains. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's as much as you know. And so, uh, relatively, or at least it wasn't a, a light. It was an average. It was an average average. Storm. Okay, yeah, it's about an average one. Okay, that's good. I say good. It's not really, but. Hmm. It could be, it could be worse. Is probably the better way of putting it. It could be far worse. It could, it be, could far be worse. worse. Um, thank you. And they, what, from our information, they travelled out with a group of other individuals. They got some more experienced people, from our understanding. Yes, my they were desperate to, as I said. So they went out into Sunset Square. I had a few people pointing in the right direction. They headed towards the mercenary corner of town and hired a team. They left a note and they went off on their way. I don't know exactly who they hired, but um, I can. They took <laughs> they, they took a month's worth 
of their personal bursaries that they give to them and must have combined it to pay them so at least hope that who they got was worth the worth the coinage. Good. Thank you for informing us. Um we will be travelling out to hopefully find out to the Somerset Town and see what aid we can provide. This I give my oath to you. I will not rest until we She looks them. really like taken aback. You're swearing an oath to her. I will swear an oath because I am fucking protecting these people if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Take a point of inspiration. Thank you. Um I would love to provide a promise that I will find them and I will can bring them home safely. But do that exactly. It is a dangerous. But no matter what, I will do everything within my power to provide them aid and to bring them home. You you honor me so much by coming here and presenting such a great amount of relief and hope. But even if the worst were to happen and that they have failed to get whatever they honors and accolades they wanted to be it known that I still will reward your time if you find my children both of them have a signet ring if you return that back to me I'll give you 125 griffins to each of your party and double so if they come back alive and in good mind and body I appreciate that but me reward is not needed I just simply wish to provide aid and rescue anyone who is in danger. But, be that as it may, I believe it would be best if we leave as soon as possible to, to make sure to do, minimize. Do you need supplies? Time. Do you need do you need uh, materials? I can I can spare these. I gave it to a man just a few days ago who also wanted to attempt the same thing. I have more ropes, uh, more rations, anything that you need. Please just ask. <laughs> Um, if you'll look to, uh, to the party, we were planning on uh, obtaining some supplies before the journey, or before leaving. If you're willing to provide, we will be very grateful. We will return anything we do not use. Please take it as a sign of my gratitude for coming to me and offering my help. It is many, many of my friends and some of my relatives thought my, my children stupid, but even if they come back and I can honor their ashes, that is more than enough. Please, please, it, whatever you need. It is the role of the young to be foolish, but be that that, that does not mean we should give up on them. I'm sure. I would like to go for it. I know I did many foolish and unpleasant things in my youth some time ago now, but I will. That does not mean I will give up on them. I will see do everything within my power, everything that I can, aid them. Thank you. And tear rolls down her face. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, this has done an old woman much, much good in her heart. Yeah, they're just happy that, but sort of also focusing when it's like, okay, we do have to, I will, we'll do everything we can, but we would, should be on our way. It was best to not waste any more time. And if the gods allow and are willing, then we will find them. Worse for wear, but very much alive. We'll return them to you. We'll do everything we can. Thank you. Um, take this, and uh, she goes and hands you uh, a note she quickly scribbles on. At the front of the house, you will find a store. Give this to the clerk, and take what you need. Thank you. Before we depart, is it possible for me to be given a description of both Kashan and daughter? The issues? Yes, yes. They're, they're both gnomes like myself. Uh, their father was past now, but they maintain more of my complexion than, than him. He's a northerner. They're more olive-skinned. Um, my boy, he is uh, as tall as I, good with a sword. Uh, swords the, from our family line he uses. My daughter is a clergy of talents. She prays to the guidance of the storm and the bolts of lightning. Um, again, she has hair like mine but it's slightly shorter. It is still, uh, and both their eyes are brown. Their family signet rings are on both their right pinky fingers, uh, like this, and she shows you a signet ring of the Hercule, um, like kind of store branding uh, sign. Well, they are pretty well off then to have signet rings. 
Yeah. Is there any or are there any distinguishing features, scars, moles, anything that marks them as definitely being your children? Apart from I, the signet ring. We have been very blessed in that none of my children ever suffered an ailment before a priest could cure it or took in a meaty blow from a training sword. No, they're, they're not marked in that way. But um, I don't imagine you'll see any other um, people uh, dressed the way. They wear my family colours. They wear dull green with an orange emblazoned um, highlight. Thank orange. you for your help. We, as my partner has said, we will do our best and we appreciate the provisions you will provide. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this has given me much to think about. Um, I was actually on my way to seek counselling and uh, make preparations with uh, the Ash Keeper. Um, at least this will be a, a kind of day. I'll have to stay that off a few more weeks. We shall hold you off know. until we receive more confirmation. You mentioned that the man had been in here previously. How long ago? Oh, maybe the second day of this year. He came by. I had sent many, many criers out and went to speak in many bars. Uh, his name is Slate. He does mm. light work for me. He's down the edge of the street uh, away a ways. Um, he fixes up old things I don't have the time or my team has the time to do. He, he's a poor man. He suffered a lot, went through a lot of uh, persecution within his community. But I take pity on him, give him the best work I can and pay him what I can. You are. I am glad to see there is still old. kindness. Oh. I'm glad to see there is still such kindness. It is. Well, persecution is not is sometimes inevitable, but it is good to see that people like you are kind and willing to give people a chance. For one to for a ship to survive the storm, they must in, only need find one ray of strong winds to guide themselves out of it. I appreciate Indeed. all of the information. We should set off as soon as possible so we have the best chance of finding your children. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and she, she bids you farewell. Uh, I think we'll go to the stall at the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Let's see if I can uh, grab any material components. I don't know if I have any material components first. Uh, I'm not sure much clerics do. It tends to be high level spells for clerics that have those requirements. Um, I, 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 um, having a holy symbol will replace um, material components. Unless, material they're components. Gold. Unless they cost gold. Unless they cost gold or are consumed. Are consumed. Yeah. Uh, a big you fucking should, spider. You what should you all Good. consumed ones cost gold, don't they? Yes. Um, well, not, actually, not like, really. Like, I, you, I can pick up some charcoal from a fire on the ground. That's fine. But it's, it, it still gets consumed. So I can't use yeah. my holy Does, it, does it get consumed? Well, it depends on the spell. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't think there is. But anyways, there's, I'll check out later. There's, there's some it's... spells that say this is consumed, like back one or something like that. It's used for fire. Oh, I need to find um, but, a yeah, pedal but... worth at least 100 gold. Yeah, I, I need to... Um... I need that as well, actually, yeah. I need food for identify. Yeah. yeah. I think I just need some more rations, because you think he said it was a yeah. six-day journey we're looking at? Yeah. Something like that, and yeah. And that's six-day there and back, but... I got rations. Oh, sorry, I should say six days there and then six days back. Um, it's rainy weather right now because the season, it's right? It's clear at the minute for today, luckily enough. It's the, starting to clear up. general season. Is it it's clear? Spring, like, it's, is it... it's springtime, so storms are, and rainfall are not too far away. So, you know, it could be clear today, so there could still be rain the next couple of days. Let me ask how much a patent is. If you think, oh, if you want to think of this calendar starting, think of it starting, like, basically in March. Uh, for okay. seasons wise. Um, Fireball doesn't consume back quantity, you just have to have it in your hands. Which is Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, um, I'd like to buy a tent, please. About you don't need to buy it, you just add it, just add it to your tech, to your inventory. Okay. So, well, that, let me it's too gold, are you uh, sure there? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, she okay. literally just give you a pass yeah. to, to take what you want from the store. She's a nice so. lady. She is, yeah. 
and she was desperate to get her kids back. I don't think she cares anymore at this point. Like, I don't know what she just offered to give us if, like, we do return them back, like, a 15, also, oh, like, 1,500 gold, I think. Hmm. It was two. It was two fifty each. Twenty five times two, times five. Yeah, so it'll be twelve fifty worth yeah. of gold. Cool. Yeah. So like, she's. I think she can afford two gold. Um. I think I kind of just need rations and. Just how many rations do you want to add to your inventory? It's gonna have to be quite a bit. Right, you want me to carry to things because I have the capacity. You're fucking Probably. huge. Yeah, he's <laughs> absolute unit is what he is. Um, yeah, probably just carry some. Like, but we're gonna need at least like ten, I think. Unless, well, unless, ten unless would be having... if you had ten rations for the group. That would be. Oh, you know, uh... I mean, like, I mean, like each. Oh right, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Um. How much would it be to like hire a horse? So make a nature check. Oh boy! I want to see if I want to see if your character knows something about this area. Horses explode. Yeah, horse, horses are very expensive, and they are a northern ah. species. Down in the south, you want to rent a heidel. A heidel. A heidel. A heidel is a horse-sized, similarly shaped, um, two-headed lizard. Nice. Sick. Okay. How One of the heads is like kind of chameleon-like. The other head is like um almost um green, like small green lizard, like. Okay. Man, and the reins are gonna be nuts for that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Um, would it still work in the same way as like a horse would to speed up a journey, or? Yeah, it would definitely. Okay, it's an option, but like, what do you guys think? Um, I'm happy to. I could probably say uh, join someone on one horse, right? Yeah. Heidels are they're lower to the ground, but they're stronger than a regular horse. So they could carry a good bit of weight. They're used as um uh pack animals and um caravanners and teamsters. Um all the wagons you guys are seeing as like this clicks for um all of these wagons are used for heidels. None of them there's very, very yeah. To have a horse in the south is like a, a lucrative, expensive thing. Probably only yeah. reserved for like knights or people who are very, very wealthy. Okay. Um, and how much roughly does it have to be like exact? Like, uh, like let me just find one. the price of a horse. Um, where's my game screen? Um, economy and coinage, travel, 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 pace. Uh, where mines vehicles? That's uh, the travel speed. Um. Where the hell is the cost of horse? Cost of horse, 5e. Cost of living payment? No, I don't need that, mate. Um, uh, yeah, say say 60 gold pieces for uh, Oh, fuck, a okay, yeah. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Hey, guys, we're, we're going to have to hoof it. Because, uh, I, don't I, I don't have anywhere near that much gold. Hmm. Um, yeah, in that case, I think we'll get, or at least, at least I, I'll get 13 rations. Okay. Is anybody else dragging rations or putting rations into their inventory? Um, yeah, I got a bunch of extra rations too. Sure. I would like to, I would like to buy 10 extra rations, please. How much is that again? You don't need to buy it. You just take it. Okay, cool. Uh, how, many, many... how many rations are people in general having in the 20. inventory? 20. I got 15. Okay. Orly has 15. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up 13 rations. Yeah, you should already have rations in inventory, so just change the number on the left yeah, to 13. It. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm picking up 13 extra, so I'll have 15 total. Yes. I grab 10 for Orly. Anything else? Any other adventuring gear you guys want to grab? I, am, I don't think there's anything else we need. No string? You don't want any string, more string for that crypt thing you just did? I already have string. What are you talking about? <laughs> I already have a compass with a red needle. A scroll of a find child. A, a hammer. Of, 
Maybe. My, my I creature, mean, my creature. Yeah, it could work. But that I don't know. I don't know how that. <laughs> that would be eleven hundred gold pieces, please, to your church. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't. Like, getting, just even just getting scrolls would be not easy. I'm saying that. Hey, Do you have a? Have an explorer, I have an explorer's pack. Does that have a bunch of shit? I I I have a dungeoneer's pack. Does it come with a shovel? Uh, no. Thor, grab a shovel. I would like to grab a shovel, please. Add a shovel to your inventory. Shovel obtained. Weighs 200 pounds. Mm. It's a good shovel. Um, use, that, use that as a ball. Just raise it above their heads and let it go. And, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I think beyond that, I kind of think it's time to go. Go. Cool. Yep. Like I, I don't think I don't think we need to speak to the mercenaries. Like we got the information we need. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys want to leave Rakmir? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. All right. So you're leaving your first time, the time where you guys all met, celebrated, fought for your lives. Find some secrets. Got so, absolutely covered in mud. Got very mud ridden. Okay, so the southern edge of Arachmir turns more um, spaced out, more, um, I guess you'd say, more recent in architecture. Um, you pass by uh, the merchant quarter where a lot of imports comes in and a lot of trade, caravans, all this kind of stuff bound for breakwater. Um, it's not peak harvesting season yet, so one of the many, many thousands and thousands of um, immigrant workers that come up from Breakwater to harvest fruit, they're not here yet. So the merchant area is relatively quiet um, at this time of year, comparatively. Um, you can see as you leave um, Rachmir, more signs of kind of great opulent design, designs and buildings as the Ministry of Masterworks is not too far away from this area of the gate um and uh yeah you guys leave heading out into the dusty more arid region of um Rackmere. um and uh yeah what do you guys what do you guys get up to as you're watching uh, you're just walking yeah. yeah yeah we're just walking um right when we like leave town once we're yeah. like out of the hustle yeah. bustle and like the distractions of cities and just yeah. like, uh, Lurnock, um declaring nightly oaths is that a normal thing for you because it's been a while since i saw someone actually do that hmm. an oath can be done by anyone which is not something that is distinctly uh, relevant to the silver no Templar. but not as formally as you did. It's it's fine. I it's just it's just very. I have I don't know what the word myself is. to providing aid to any that request it or any that need it. This is simply one of my one step more step that I can take to provide help to. He's, it's still sort of, he's, I think they said they were like teenagers, right? Like twenty, was it? They oh. hadn't yet reached twenty. Yeah. How do like they're kids? I don't give a fuck what people the say. Between <laughs> age zero and nineteen. Yeah, but like, still kids. Because yeah. like, honestly, if you're that, if they're less than twenty, they're gnomes like, too. So like, I don't like. Yeah. It does not matter really what else there can be. People need help. These children need aid and perhaps need rescuing. What? would I be if I did not provide that help, if I had the opportunity? No, providing help is good and admirable. It's just the oath itself which I find funny. You take you take issue with my... Or you, yeah, you, no, I don't take You believe issue. it odd? You believe it odd that I swore an oath to it? it you, you strike me as a man slightly out of his time. What time do you believe that would be? I don't know. 
the past. I have sworn many an oath, and I have broken some of those oaths. I will not pretend otherwise. But this is one that is dear to me. I will not break this if I cannot, or if I have any choice in the matter. Mm. I'm on I'm on your side there, Larinok. They need help, we provide it. I concur. It is unconscious unconscionable to me for us to hear of their plight and not to go and help. It is fortunate that we may be able to find Hendrix rogue thief. That is a bonus, really. It would be yes. good to find both. But if I have the choice between letting um Frank, I can't remember the name. Slate. Slate. But if I have the option between letting Slate go and rescuing these children, there will be no choice for me. This will be the children. I can agree. It is weird. Well, it seems a little odd to me that the man who is or was accused and incarcerated for stealing the urns of the dead would take on such a selfless act to go out and find the children, but I suppose there is a reward. Doesn't seem like something a coward would do. And I suppose that's Lerner the actually sort of snaps to you when he mentions coward like people oh. people make mistakes. People will do wrong. Does not mean that they will always and must be that way. If indeed he did do all these slates, then that was a number of years ago, and he has paid for that. He has done his time. He is perhaps seeking redemption, even if it is if it is a reward that he seeks. It is still a good task that he does. It's something that should be accounted for. Perhaps I, I could... he is not the man that stole those things any longer. Perhaps he has changed. I concur. It... it is what I mean. It, it, for me, it appears that the person who stole the urns was either at that time or currently a coward. And this man does not appear to be a coward. That is all I mean. I find it odd that someone who... was already incarcerated for the theft, would then go back and place a note asking for forgiveness. It will be interesting to see if he really was the person who was there. We should revisit this conversation at the end when we have more answers and things resolved. Mm -hmm. Speculating halfway through an investigation. It does this no good. He isn't the whole Limited. investigation speculation. Limited. It can go wild and then lead you in the wrong directions, the long, wrong ideas. We should be careful about that. Mm -hmm. All right. There is a lot of traffic, you know, leaving Rachmere comparatively. It's middle of the day. Um, well, early morning still, probably about you know, 10, 10 a.m. Um, as you guys get going. No, no, sorry, it would be later than that because it's still the same day. So. Well, yeah, because it was, it was like midday when we went to speak yeah, to yeah. the flight. Yeah, so my bad. I imagine like yeah. probably two, three o'clock now. Yeah, I'll say I have to. Um, I love having a little clock on my calendar I can just advance time with. <laughs> um, helps keep track of things very, very easily. So um, as you're leaving, you guys, you don't have to present identity stones for leaving, but you see like the queue of people presenting identity stones to the brass shields as, as you guys leave. Um, and you're not more than 100 paces outside of Rachmir, and you see a man on his hands and knees in full religious robes um, with a big like um, glass frame across both the front of his eyes, crawling around, staring at the stones outside of um, the town. And um, there's a man on his knees with a piece of parchment. And um, the man with the this like glasses frame on his face, he's used speckled in glasses, magnifiers, is pointing at pieces of stone and saying things that you recognize in central immune uh, 
um, what do you call it, Torkel. Um, and he's saying like, look at this, what an embarrassment to the ministry. These stones aren't even properly aligned to the dilation of the sun. Oh no. <laughs> and this one, yeah. it is cracked and has not been fixed. I'm going to let you handle this one. What? Yeah, so he's saying, yeah, sorry, he's saying the 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 stones aren't in the right place, and they're just stones on the ground. There's, there's, this is the road out of Rackmere, and this guy oh, is he's in, in on his hands and knees inspecting it and giving criticisms. Oh, he's okay, like, okay. this report will detail the failures of this of Rackmere's ministry in upkeeping their, and he's like, just starts to mumble, and this is like, yes, sir, yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> it's very disappointing. The you are so wise. Intern. Yeah, you are so wise oh. for spotting such a defect in the stone. Sean, I think I heard him say these stones are not aligned to the dilation of the sun. So, so look yeah. at the stones on the pathway. Do they look like they're like? No. Make a like, stone really. cutting check. Whatever your ability is. <laughs> Um, stone cunning. Whenever you make an intelligence history check related to the origin of stone work, uh, okay, intelligence history. I get it. An extra plus two for efficiency bonus. I double your proficiency bonus to the check instead of your normal proficiency. Yeah, so, so it should be so it's plus, plus four two. Plus two, whatever you roll. Yeah. Yeah, if I roll just a one d twenty plus four, that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ten. Ten. I mean, the stones look serviceable for a series of roads heading into a major city. They look absolutely fine. Um, I mean, sure, they could be perhaps better cut and more uh, textured and flatter for the wagon travel. But these are well used stones. They a lot that get a lot of um, burst of traffic throughout the year, so they look fine to you. But you can choose to just walk past the guy if you want. Um. Yeah, I'll talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. Okay. So, yeah, you see that he is regaled in the robes of Kinos. The, the evening? What time is it now? It's um, like, like half two. Good um, afternoon, sir. It seems that you are inspecting the road and have found some defects. He just like, gives a sigh and says, Yes, isn't it obvious? Yeah, I don't think it is obvious, no. Look, look here. And he gestures towards you and um, put these on. He gives these big mag... You know what these are. These are um, spectacles which are used to enhance things at close range. I'll uh, put, them, put, them, put them on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put them on. Um, and yeah, he, he says, look, look there. You see the way that that stone is laid? It does not match up with the corresponding one on the back right-hand side, 20 feet, 10 feet away. And then that one on the back side, 10 feet away, it does not mind. And the pattern is all mixed up. It is not a complete pattern. It is such an embarrassment. I, Don't you see it? I suppose that this may be correct. There seems to be some defects intermittently on the road, but... Can you believe this is what our taxes are spent on? Making shitty roads like this? I assume that you will take good pride in fixing it yourself. I will. I will. My name is Nico. Nico Macho. Nico, Nico Macho. Macho. I am. Oh, shit. Torco. I am Torco Goodmanson. Nice to meet you. Where did you study? I studied at the finest academy. The one in Charleston. Aerith, capital. Have I heard of him? Uh, sure. Uh, no. <laughs> no, you haven't. He just seems like a busybody. Just a, yeah. just a bureaucrat. That he looks tell what, where the stones would have originated from. Like, is there like a... They just, yeah. But with, your, with your skill check, they're probably just local stone. Um, local stone from a quarry. They're old, like probably maybe renovated 
handful of times in the past couple hundred years, but they're pretty, it's like Roman roads. They're pretty efficient. They stayed, they're made well enough. And he says, oh, you know, I have spent 23 years traveling up and down the Concord and examining many, many dozens of roads. And this has to be in the top 55th of one of the worst. That is horrible to hear. <laughs> I, <laughs> I wish you well. Do you have a proposal for the traders who will need to use the road during your renovation? It is simple. When we need to conduct res uh, renovations of the road and actually make it performative and functional to what Kinos envisioned when he designed in sacred literature for how roads should be built, we will put wooden laps down and wooden structures so that the simple commoners can just walk on them. And that will be fine. But then again, the Thesni a lot, they don't like you walking on nature and plants, so we'd have to write a proposal to keep them happy. Oh, it would grow arms and legs. Mm. Simply, maybe I should just burn the report. Don't get involved with a Thes near lot. Would that? How would you sleep at night knowing that this one here is not exactly the same as the one ten feet back? It's <laughs> just like dead pan in them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The Kinos must guide my slumber in such things. I think that if you were to take a larger view, you would see that the world, the road works. And there has not been any issue caused to any of the traders. Obviously, Look form is important, but functionality equally. Look so. at them. They they look forward. They they travel forward. They hit their heidels forward on their lanes. They don't look at the ground stepping beneath them. Do you know how dirty heidels' feet are? And those scales, the claws, how badly they scratch up the road? If I had my way, we would ban heidels as a mean of transportation. They damage the roads too much, far too much. He talk all nods as he starts walking away like this guy's crazy. <laughs> He's like, yes, and I agree. Perhaps you should put in a letter of complaint. You just see the assistant just go, please, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, he says, it was nice meeting you, Torkel, good man, son. Have you fair uh, travels? It was nice to meet you too, Nico, Miko, Kiko. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Nico much, and then uh, <laughs> he can just walk away. <laughs> the, unfortunately, Torkel, that is a good representation of what some bureaucrats and clergy is like in your church. So preoccupied with the fine details, how something is made rather than the actual function of it. <laughs> yeah. Really, it's just an estate asylum that we just this is push the sort of crazy people into. Some people cannot see the forest for the trees. It is a bit of, yeah, of an issue. As long as it is not doing any harm to people, then they can be and worship as they like. I suppose. I hope it doesn't do any harm, though. I don't think he has truly considered the issues that may arise if he was to decide to start ripping up one of the larger roadways into town. Relax, we, have, we have, I suppose, bigger fish to fry. Fish? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. How are you doing with, how are you like 20 with rations? That's not enough for you. Um, well, I won't be happy, but I'll be alive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh no, I'm, woe is me, I have to eat normal portions. <laughs> hmm. What is the All portion right. for ants? Yeah, so um, you guys travel the roads. It's it's a well it's a well um traveled road. So it's pretty. You see a lot of caravaners and stuff like that. Like you, but sometimes they give you a wave and a, a greeting, a fermentation. Um, you can see some buzzards flying over, um, the corners of the slopes of the rocky um sand croppings before you. The vegetation is um shrubby. Trees are very rare. Once you start to get past the outskirts of Rakmir, um, there's some cottages and small lodgings and housings actually on the southern side of the town that occasionally will be a small vineyard a line of cypress trees a line of olive trees here and there but actually once you a few about an hour or so past that get on the proper outskirts of the town itself it starts to venture in the sweeping 
um, arid landscape. Now, thanks to the rains, a lot of greenery is coming, but these are the rains for most of the year. The springtime is when most of the rain comes in after it dries up. This will, area will be dry for eight, nine months of the year. So things are looking pretty green comparatively to how it usually is. Um, you can hear the small chirpings of insects um, and just a slight breeze, but still a bit of humidity in the air. Um, dull bit of cloud above overhead, but no signs of rain just yet. The sun is shining brightly. Um, and yeah, you guys, are you just following the sun scorched road? Uh, yeah, I imagine so. Like, yes, sir. I don't okay. imagine there's going to be a quicker way. No, no, this is it. This is it. Right, okay. So how long do you walk before stopping, I guess? I suppose when the rest of these guys get tired. Walk. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the road right now. We we started at Vard, right? No, we started. At no, Rathmere. you started at Rachmir. Vard is Rachmir. That is. <laughs> okay, got you. To be fair, we were discussing Vard oh, a lot because makes... of the rocks. Makes way more sense. Of the... Yeah. Mainstone. Um. Mm. Yeah. Right. Uh. The rock has done a lot of traveling. He is a okay with walking long distances. Yeah, it's probably going to be looking at looking at what you know, probably about a day's walk to just get across that bridge to actually get um, to the other side of, of that bridge. I think like eight hours in, Hendrix starts complaining, but he doesn't yeah. actually slow down. He just like bitches out <laughs> loud for the sake of it. Yeah. yeah. But so... Hendrix, think how good it'll be for you. How good what will be for me? Exercise. You're all noodly. I I spend most of my days on these godforsaken roads. All right. So at about five hours in, the sun starts to slowly give signs of its setting. And so you've got about another hour of sunlight left. It is around um, it is around um, half seven in the evening. And you guys have just been walking on a nice, well-maintained road. Forget what that guy said. It has been road maintained the entire way through. So, yeah, you guys have been walking for five hours so far. <laughs> uh, like, you know, it takes a deep breath. And, ah, it is good to be on the road again. I love being out here. It is good to see the whole region is a reminder of why we fight and protect for people. Yeah, but you get bored of it eventually. All the mm -hmm. roads look the same. All the towns smell the same. But all the people you meet... They I die. Disagree. So the roads the road mm -hmm. are but... usually different from the towns. They all have their unique aspects. Uh... Some are particularly pleasant. Rackmill like maybe not as much. <laughs> yeah. uh. So the likes of the likes of um where Torkel and Thorak are from the in deciduous woodland, you know, this is very different to what you guys are used to. You experienced a little bit of it, but now you guys are a good R couple R south of Rackmill, five R south. It's starting to become really just like arid desert land. Um coastal Mediterranean land. Um, you can see like some mountains off in the distance here and there, spotted amongst your journey, mostly to the um, uh, south, uh, I guess the west, which would be your east as you're heading south, the eastern sides. But you do see um, forests um, way in the distance when you start to get to some high points or way in the distance east and west. But you know, once, once you're across that bridge, you are now in the proper expanse of um, of uh, the Arid Expanse, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly what the name of it's called. You'd be probably yeah. well informed yeah. proper in the Arid Expanse. So, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I guess you guys walk for another couple hours in the dark, and you have traveled for eight hours, and yeah. uh, you start to come across the, the frame, the the you can hear what running before you see it, before you see the the uh, you know, uh, bridge itself. Oh, is it the, the bridge over the Dry Run River? 
Yeah, yeah. It's taking about eight hours to get here. I was trying to figure out scale. Yeah, it was about 24 miles you guys have walked. Mm, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah. 24 miles. So, yeah, you guys have moved that far in about eight hours. Um, oh, okay. It's dark. It's slightly cooler. Um, you have traveled far, good pace, kept yourselves um, in good condition. And as you get closer towards the river, it does sound like there's a surge on. There's been a lot of rainfall. There's been a lot of water the past few weeks. This river is probably a good period of dry weather before it calms down. And you can hear this, the crushing water of it. Um, and then you start to see the outline of, of the bridge itself with um, a large guard post at one end, end of it, um, manned by a couple brass shields and um, torchlight and some like small lodgings, some small like tents and circled caravans and um, people preparing to camp on this side of the bridge. Because the bridge is, you know, it's like it's a couple miles long. So um, people are are camping on right on it, um, right on the actual bridge itself. People are, are staying. Some people are just still walking through. But it's it's decorum to not set up your tent or your camp within the actual middle of the bridge. The bridge is about yeah. 80 foot wide. Um, it's, stub it's in sections. It looks kind of like, if you imagine, like one of those really large um, stone bridges, uh, medieval, it's like that, but extended out. The, go the gorge beneath the river is only about an 80 foot drop at the, at the furthest, so it's not a, a brave way. You can still see with your dark vision and the lights down there, because some people have came down the sides of the bridge itself and actually camped on the riverside. So yeah, what, what do you guys, what do you guys do? I have a, I have a question, DM. Yes. I'm terrible with names, so sorry. the the uh, the sun untouched citadel or sunless sun citadel. citadel. Sun sunless citadel. citadel. Yeah. Uh, could you give me a reference point of where it is on this map? Yeah. So if you look Roughly. at um, if you're looking at Legend Keeper, you see where the slumber the slumber lake is. Like up, it starts in the mountains east of Rakmir. Yeah. Yeah. So if you come down there, and then you see where the ridge the rivers diverge. Slumbering river. Yeah. And the, and the Grand River. It's somewhere in amongst there, um, some the citadel where be, between those rivers. So you've got to go east along the river. Side. Oh, oh shit. Okay, so we're just gonna be following this river up north, basically, or northeast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't need to rest. Do you guys need to rest? It's only a, probably another ten-hour walk there. Only 10 hours? That's nothing. Let's do it. <laughs> it may be better for us to camp in an area that has people so that we know they were relatively safe and continue on in the morning. But I understand that we want to do this as quickly as possible. I have no problem with pushing on. It would not be my first choice. I will make I am... the decision to lead on up. I am... Usually willing to push on when people are in need, but if danger is in fact possible, it would be better to tackle it while rested. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the kids have been gone for a couple of weeks. What's another day, right? You can push on a little bit further and then continue to and then rest. But um, no, if we're gonna if we're gonna camp. We should camp here next to the road. I think uh, yeah. Torkel's right. You camp where there's lots of traffic, keeps monsters right. away. It's not only that, it's like, because it's still going to be. Oh, because I'm assuming cause, because we're on a road, it's probably been faster. Okay. Okay. It's still yeah. like two days out from where we think the summer city. Yeah, you, in, a, in a little while, you guys are not going to be on the roads anymore. It's going to be. Yeah, um, and that's going to be a lot slower. So, like, we're. It's a very. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. Uh, uh, how, it, 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 how much the road. further do you think it is, DM, till we get to the Sunless Citadel? Uh, give me one second in my wonder draft. Uh, about two days, I would say, going at a slow pace in this terrain. I say we keep going. You want to go through the night in the Alex Band? Just talking to the party. Talking to the party. I'm just saying, I think we should keep going. We can get well rested um, at the end of this particular leg. And then continue our journey after that, one day through. Uh, Lennox is just going to look to the party and see what they think, because 
like I'm willing to push on, but I know people, including Lunok, do still need sleep. And it would be best to not like in the wilderness be traveling sleep dep deprived. Okay, let us push on, but we will need to rest at some point. Okay. I think that's fair. So, Dan, I think we're going to continue pushing up along mm -hmm. the river. Now, you said it's mm -hmm. like a sheer cliff. Well, are you going to, I assume you're going to cross the bridge first and then drop down the river side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's a very brilliantly made bridge. You'd see it better in the daylight. That's as much as I'll say for now. So, yeah, you cross the bridge. Um, there's no toll or anything like that. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, yeah, you cross it and then you start to head down what would be your left hand side down the bridge. And I guess you're just following the river. Yeah. Is there yes. anybody outside of their camping? Um, out, yeah. Out of the tent or anything, just mulling about? Yeah, there's about maybe 20 or so people on this left hand side down by this river on what would be this side of the bridge now. Um, Can I ask them a quick question? Can I, like, yeah, um, it, yeah sure. We'll good, you. good sirs. Um, me and my party intend to venture off into the, the arid expanse through the forest over there or through the, the, the oh, through the scrubland over there. Is there anything in this area that is notable in terms of wildlife that comes out specifically at night? Um, yeah, he's in the he's like drinking, um, smells like some hard liquor. Um, and he doesn't seem drunk like that. He just gives a nod and says, watch out for snakes. Don't step on anything. Anything rattles, run away or move back slowly. Uh, what else? What else? Um, desert foxes, jackals, don't leave any of your rations out. They'll run off with it. Uh, small groups of wolves here and there, but you make a lot of noise, they'll run off. Vultures, eagles. That's it for actual creatures. For monsters, well, that's a different story. I wouldn't go too much further. There are lions about. I wouldn't go into their territory in the dark. Thank you for the warning. I will relay these to my people, but again, you know, spare the place. Oh, oh, before I forget, you see any different ground, any softer ground, looks like it goes into a tunnel. Don't go into it. There's Kruthic that live in there. Oh, no. There's Kruth? What is a Kruthic? It's like a large insectoid creature on four legs. They burrow they've burrowed hives and tunnel systems right through the desert. Don't fall in any of their traps in, in their tunnels. Dozens and no. dozens of them once, once you alert them. Very hard to kill. Hard as... Hard as nails, their armor. Their, their uh, chitin, I think someone called it once. Noted. I appreciate the update. Well, have uh, a good rest, and I will let my friends know. Oh, oh, uh, the worms. You feel the ground vibrate. Stop still. Don't move. Worms. Gruthic worms, lions. Okay. Yes. Yes, yeah. uh, that's as much as I remember. I travel the roads. I don't go far away into the shrubland. Too dangerous. It does seem like it is dangerous. <laughs> and he walks away. Yeah. Okay. I think it's... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, yeah, so I'll go back and tell the party, like, if we feel the ground start to move, uh, we have to stand still. Also, soft ground leads to uh, some weird creature that apparently is very hard to kill, uh, and also they are lions. A number of predators in this region, then. A number Used of to things be. to take into a to keep in mind. And we think Blade walked through all this. Okay. Hmm. I mean, it is. Whether, it is. Yeah. Okay. Whether he did or not. not there are people that need help. Yes, no, I agree. The kids, yes. Whatever about them making through it, we can make it through it if we work together. If they made it through it, I mean, we'll see. <clears throat> All right. oh, so and Hendrix starts walking off into the night. Yeah. All right. 
I mean, um, let me just do some checking. You know what adventuring day. You guys, if you want to push on, you probably have about another another two hours of walking before I'm going to need to start. You guys start to make um, some con saves to take points of exhaustion from traveling through the night. Yeah. Okay. I, I assume that we are not going to be taking con saves, guys. Yeah. You want to stop before that point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one but, level yeah. of exhaustion is not a big deal. Yes, no, is. we're okay. Disadvantage to all ability checks. Yeah. yeah um, right. So, for the first uh, couple hours of navigating to, up into this point, I would like survival check. Now, I know I know that Orly has survival, so I know he's got it ticked, but it's a plus two, so if anybody else wants to leave. I would like to give him guidance on that check. Okay. Yes. I only have plus one. Okay, well, I'll I make have... a survival check for Orly. I have two, but it's not trained. Hmm. Sean probably has, like, plus four. Survive? Survival. Survival. I have plus four, but yeah, it's not, I don't get my... It's not proficiency. Hmm. Well, well, have, get the, have I got the best plus? Uh, Orly has it trained, but it's a... It's a... What do you call it? It's a plus two. Does he not trained it for some gout? you have survival trained as well, Sean? No, I don't have his trained. I have just your flat wind wisdom score, isn't it? Plus four. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wait, he has, wait. He has expertise in stealth, isn't Orly? Orly has, a Orly has a bunch of expertise, but I don't think survival is one of them. Not yet, anyway. So who's, who's, who's I running? I thought, I thought you got it for scout. Uh, I will check that. So I remember stuff. scouts get something because they're like the. He's got skirmish. Uh, when you choose his archetype, you can proficiency in nature and survival checks if you don't really have it. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check. Okay, so oh yeah, so you'd be a plus four then. Yeah. Um, I guess it, it gets it doesn't really matter if it's plus four, but good to know. Yeah, and nature. Expertise. Right. Okay. He's got a plus four. All right. I guess I'll roll it for Orly. You can survive. You can aid him if you want. Oh, he's getting. He's getting guidance. Um, but you can aid him if you want Torkoal, give him advantage. I, I don't think I can because I've not trained in survival. That's true as well. That's true as well. Sorry, I thought you were because of plus four. Never mind. Uh, normal know. roll, no advantage. A six. Yes. God damn it, Ollie. Nine. 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 <laughs> Doesn't matter, I don't think. Unless it does. What's the order of March here, guys? Uh, the first, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. Yeah, but uh, who's first? <laughs> Lerenok will happily lead the way. Yeah, okay. I'll go. I'll go second then. Okay. I'll go towards the back to cover the rear. I'll go third. Uh, so it's it's Lerenok, Torek, um, Orly, um, and then I guess uh, I guess Lerenok, Torek. Yeah. Hendrick, one clear token up and drop on the top of that. That's a good point as well. Yeah. How do I pull a token? Just, Just uh, grab and grab and drag it. Yeah. So. Okay. 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 Uh, um. Yeah. Or they should be in between me and Hendrick. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'm third. Oh yeah. Yeah, that works. Because we're yeah, traveling. Yeah. We're yeah, traveling yeah, here, yeah. yeah. Travels this way. There we go. There we go. Yeah, okay. So you're walking in the dark. Do you have dark sight? Um, what do you call it, Lurak? I do. Does everybody have dark sight? I do not. Does anybody have a torch? I have light, uh, uh, as in the the uh, cantrip spell. Do you want to have a light source light in the middle of the darkness? I mean, I suppose I'd ask. Like, we're being like. Lernock is leading. You, you can you can turn on if danger pops up immediately, and the rest of us can see you all enough. Yeah, put a light on. We'll be okay. Well, uh, I'll, 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 if opposite. if Lernock is, is at the it, head, you can of have it, it so. on an item. You can have it on an item where it's covered in a cloth, and then when that when if a combat happens or event happens, you can uncover it if you wanted. Um. Sure. Yeah. I mean, cast my... on your tongue. And that way, whenever you need to, you just open your mouth and it shoots a beam of light and you can see. No. N n no. <laughs> uh, this isn't fucking Dragon Ball. 
I assume that like I need some like I have a little cloak or something or my pack or whatever that if I was to catch cast it on my Warhammer, I could like tuck it underneath there so it's not showing. And then yeah, pull it out. It's totally fine. Yeah. Cool. We'll say that. Alright. Okay. Um all right. So you're uh walking along um and the runoff, you're you're in the front and you've got dark vision and stuff like that. At some point of walking, you're you're walking on like some sandy, dusty little um a trail. It's probably a game trail of some kind, but not sure what. Um something that's been too recent. But you're just following the signs of the river. And because of the noise of your armor, the noise of the river not far away, um you just feel like something move across your right foot. Can you give me a dexterity saving throw, please? Oh yeah, I'm fantastic at these. That's good. Yeah, oh, right. dear. Uh, oh dear. Okay, so um, you well, feel you yeah. feel two little prongs of intense pain that have snaked their way up into like a greave of open um, material of your clothing underneath your left, um, like above your ankle and beneath your um, shin bone, as something has bitten you. Can you con save, please? I need to get at ease. Nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you're going to take half of this. I'm going to roll the damage from properly. Okay. Imagine dying to a snake bite. You take cool. seven points of poison damage as a snake has bitten you on the leg. What do you <laughs> do? Um, you have to cut it off. All right. Uh, no, I think I'm good. Uh, I think Lerner will probably just uh, reach down because is it still like holding on or it's bitten you and then it's like um, snaked its way away and he just and it hisses and snakes its way through the through the <laughs> you're like you'll notice Lerner just like flip it and then yeah. yeah I believe that was one of those snakes no we should be more careful around here it seems as though they are not hindered by the dark as we are. Give me another constitution saving throw, please. Ooh. Wow, it's good. Not... 20, you still save. You take um, 8 points of poison damage. Oh, it still goes on. Wow. Um, okay. Um, are you still feeling the effects? Is it so... You help there, Lernock. Yeah. Um... Do you want to Can look I... at your leg? Yes. You look down and you see your um, skin with a piercing is just necrotizing. Wow. And uh, flesh uh, is just sallowing. Can I um, see this? Okay. Yeah, you can I see would... it with your dark vision, yeah. While he's doing that, um, I would like to spend five hit points to cure the poison on me. Oh, sorry, hit oh, okay. I'll, I'll spend five of uh, my lay on hands points. That is it. Yes, you end the poisoning, and you see yes. your skin slowly start to turn from a dull black and into a pinkish, yellowish gray again. Oof. Yeah. Uh, you want some healing there? It would be wise to avoid any of those in the future. Um, okay, I will just I will just use a lay on hands. I'll find it. Fucking hell. I'll use a cure wounds on myself. Okay. Um, yeah, there we go. Yeah. What does it look like when you heal yourself? Um, so people just see. Uh, it'll just sort of kneel down for a moment has his hand on the affected area and mm. you sort of see this glow it starts in his chest actually uh, and then it just sort of moves down to his uh, hand mm -hmm. um, and he just sort of holds it over the wound for a bit and you sort of see him focus he's actually quite not there's sort of no emotion on his face it's just sort of something he does like he's just like oh, okay very it's very natural I should say mm -hmm. um and then he sort of just takes his hand away. The glow dies down, and the wound is, I imagine, a little bit better, or the flesh is healed a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. I was just making that for Orly to see if he recognized anything. Um. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's getting better. Yeah. You're not you're not feeling the affection. Make another Constitution saving throw for me, please. Yeah. The con save was just to see if you saved half to take half damage. It was not to save against the poison. So bear that in mind. Ooh. Okay. Good to know, but 
looking like we've got quite a few ways to cure poison at the moment. At the moment. At the moment. Mm-hmm. We have certainly stumbled into the, the snake's area. Yeah. I didn't realize you had the ability to cure poison, I thought. I thought you were just a soldier. I was a soldier many years ago, but it's no longer the life I wish to live. Uh, I wish to the, uh, the knightly oath makes a lot more sense now. I was once a knight within the Silver Templars. I was a member of the... Maybe double check, I think it was the Order of the Unbreakable? Yes. Yes. I was a knight of the Order of the Unbreakable, but that was a that was many years ago now. I am I am no longer a member. Very, very famous um, regiment within the Silver Tower. Uh, One yeah. DM is knight a um, rank of ability or does it have sorry, that's not I'm gonna ask knight correctly. Uh, rank? Does does that imply does that yes. imply nobility? A knight is the first is the first consecrated rank of being a Silver Templar. So if you look um, on Legend Keeper, there's a, a breakdown of it there. So he would have been like he would have been like an actual functioning knight. Um, but there's a bunch of regulars that he would have commanded underneath him. So like uh, he would have had like there's regular man at arms as corporals and sergeants, but an actual knight has like their own squire and has their own wage and would get given like some more property. So it's quite a high, it's starting to get in the airs of nobility, yeah, of uh, aristocracy. Uh, well, if you think about it, all the ones that the person we're trying to find that earn, that's a knight. Well, okay, okay. Come on. okay, that was helpful information, yeah. but that didn't directly answer my it's question. Not, it's not something you was he born? Does this imply he was born no, in nobility? So the way you become consecrated is that a priest blesses you into becoming a full-time member within the order. So a priest does it. Um, or, um, and the only way that that happens is either you are sponsored by a, by a knight, which can happen to anybody, um, to become a squire. And once you complete your squire training, you then become consecrated. Or um, you are able to enter an order as a squire if you have if one of your parents uh was a knight previously so they can don't they can skip the entire regular man at arms a regular a regular troops they can just create straight into being a squire okay so it's like a warrior lodge sort of thing yeah yeah okay okay so that's good thank you i'd have to yeah. i hate to have to start talking to other and not respectfully Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wouldn't expect him. He's he's not a, he's a knight no longer. Yeah, well, if he, if he was if he was nobility, I, I understand this is a theocracy, and they might not even have nobility. It's not super. It's not like classic medieval That's where it's like, oh, you're. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's not the same. I got you. I, if anything, I he's higher. Much, he's higher because sure. he's an Azamar. He's an Azamar, so he's literally like God. God. Angel touched, so you should hear why. Like, do, is that evident? Yeah, he's an Asmar. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, he's a child. He's a children of child of heaven. Handsome fellow. Yeah. I can be both. I can be an Asmar and a handsome fellow. Yeah, um, but it's, it doesn't mean as much if you're an Asmar. They're all handsome. Yeah. They're all perfect, yeah. perfect specimens of of health and of of gorgeousness, yeah. It's like being um, a tall dragonborn, it's like, it's not impressive. They're all tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so um, that is what happens. That is the only moment of um, altercation happens to you while you guys are walking around in the dark, in the sand, in the dust, and the shrubbery. Now, what's... What I guess, to describe the situation, what it's like walking in this, if you imagine just walking through, like, the trees and the shrub, there's no trees, it's just shrub. Between four foot to around eight foot, the tallest of just shrub in any direction. And it's like walking through a maze of it. And then you get the high point, and you drop back down India, and get the high point, and you drop back down India, all in the dark. So you're sticking very close, following signs of your allies. Um, and then that's when you start to hear like this kind of chittering um, of noise, which uh, to anyone 
who to all of you recognize it as like the sound of jackals just like um in the darkness not mm. very dangerous to a person but just scavengers um around nearby it seems like there's like maybe half a dozen of them skittering um over the next uh bank to you guys maybe 80 50 yards away they haven't they don't haven't heard you guys approaching well yeah. we could either continue our advance and deal with them or we could camp out here for the night now and make some watch and see if they do not uh, they think otherwise than attacking us i suppose we should deal with them and they in camp we should not gamble okay yeah, if they're that close, they're gonna smell us. Hmm. You want to walk go? over the bank and intimidate the jackals we, away? We, yeah, we probably shouldn't run directly into them. Let's try and like go around them a bit. It'll only oh. be a short detour, and it's best just to get out of their area. Okay, we can try that. We can try and avoid them. Okay. Yeah, so we'll take like a forty-five degree to the left detour. All right. Yeah, you you walk past them, um, and uh, you walk you know, a bit more closer towards the river. Um, and uh, yeah, you just circumvent, circumnavigate uh, the sounds of the chittering, and and, and uh, you can hear. Um, why don't everybody roll me a passive perception check, please? Not a passive perception, a perception check. I don't know why I asked. <laughs> I will roll nothing. <laughs> Twenty-three. Very good. Very good. Sixteen. I'm very good. Guidance yeah. myself. Yeah. Fifteen. Nineteen. Four, Nineteen. All right, perfect. I'll just see what see what Orly rolled. See if he's missing out. Perception. He rolled a seven. Yeah, he's he's missing out. He's too busy focusing on the ground in front of you guys. The rest of you, so you know that noise that a dog makes when it's like chewing a bone. It's like and it's like kind of and and that and yeah. then like like dogs play Rattle. fighting and like growling at each other. You hear that from this group of jackals as he's like starting to circumnavigate. Um, and like yipping and, and whining and stuff like that. It's very social creatures, very loud creatures, but that's what you, that's what you recognize the signs of them chewing on something. Oh, are we going to have to investigate in case it's the kids? Oh, like, or, or slight. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, probably should... them. Uh, it's yeah, exactly. a body. Are we going to be able to tell? Yeah, I mean, you make an excellent point. We should. It might be point worth getting a seeing if we can get a look at him. Yeah, I'm sure that gnome bones would be distinguishable. Yeah. So, so we've, we've, you guys got, we've got we've got a gnome with us. So. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll take out their bones and examine to see if they're the same. <laughs> Live example. Yeah, no. You know what bo your bones look like, right? <laughs> Is anyone sneaking forward to have a look? Or are you just all going as one unit to look at this? I'm going to be honest. I am like the worst person for stealth. You do not want me on a stealth. Is a terrible idea, right? I mean, you can ask me to stealth. I'm terrible, but you can ask me to do it. Okay, who here's the stealthiest? I have it's zero. Probably only. you. It's probably you. What? No, I'm not. No. I have a plus two to stealth, but that's it. Orly has an eight. Plus eight. Yeah. We should okay. probably yeah, okay. If we yeah, if we if we including Orly, then yes, it's all gonna be Orly. You want Orly to sneak ahead and have a look? Please. Yeah, let's send him up. So if he dies, <laughs> rogue. It's not our fault. He's a rogue. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna... rogue and the scout. It's literally what he does. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cast enhance ability on him. It gives him. I'm gonna do the cat's grace uh, target advantage. advantage on dexterity checks. Okay. Uh, advantage stealth at uh, twenty six. All right. He goes. He has a look. He comes back. It's. It looks like they're all eat, they're eating a giant boar. Oh. Looks Lovely. dead Lovely. a couple of days maybe, but they're just they're just it's dead and they're just picking it apart. No. Well, that is nothing for us to be concerned of then. It's not one of the people we. Do not wish it to be. 
We should perhaps make some distance before they do find us. Yeah, I agree. Okay. It's at this point as Orly comes back and you guys have to make a a, a noise uh, a journey away. Um, you hear in the distance a roar, a very very loud roar that carries for hundreds of meters from its point of origin. Gonna and go I need on. everyone to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh boy. Oh, I, 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 I get advantage. Yeah, advantage. Hells, yeah. You get advantage. Wait. Point. I'm going to roll same time. It's like a... It doesn't count. Oh. Yeah. You got a 22 anyway. You got a natural 20. <laughs> yeah. What was the second roll for, Ryan? Um, I was... I clicked on a wisdom... Oh, um, no. Check. Instead of wisdom save, I want to see if there was a difference. So you just take the first yeah. six. Yeah, that's fine. that's fine. All right. So you hear this huge roar in the distance, back back away from you guys, um, and in the midst of that roar, Torkel, you're petrified with just sudden fear, not fear as like the condition, but just like, oh, that's a creature out in the darkness, and it made a really loud roar. Thoric, you don't give a damn. You're a man <laughs> of eight foot stature, mm. of huge plate mails, and a great warhammer. You don't have anything to be scared of. Oranic, see him again for being a knight. Hendrick, you don't have any heavy armor. You're with your, these new companions. You don't know if you can trust them yet in full Hendrick, combat. Hendrick's reaction is saying, fuck this. He just like turns around and walks away from the roar. Just like, yeah. I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. Get away from this shit. Yeah. Um, and you hear that roar, and then a couple hundred yards distant away from that roar. If this one was coming from your, if you're still walking east and the river is on your, um, what would be above you, this would be coming, this roar would have been coming behind you. And then the boar is below you to the right hand side which would be map south and you hear a second roar closer it's same intensity same loudness but just closer and it just there's almost just this this hint of vibrational reverberation in the air when you hear these this roar and a few seconds after both these roars happen you hear all the jackals run away and they scatter like flies and that's where we're going to leave the session there. Okay. <laughs> we're going to get ambushed by two lions. Hell yeah. That was fun. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah, really enjoyable. Yeah. I um, won't be uh, available next Sunday because I am. We're not playing next Sunday, are we? Oh, okay, cool. I haven't, I we I haven't, I haven't booked it. Or I haven't checked the... Yeah. My calendar, yeah. So we can pe perhaps do a different, different one. Yeah. Uh, different day. Available pretty much every Sunday. Now until the rest of the time at the minute. Yeah. Um, make it available, but the the MLB is in London that weekend, so I'm going for the games. Yeah, I wonder if we could do a mid weekend, maybe possibly. Um, I won't be able to do Wednesday or Friday. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, uh, Wednesday is out for me, but I can keep the rest clear. So is Thursday good for two people? Is it good for three? Uh, Thursday's fine for it's me. good for me? Yeah, well, Thursday uh, works for me. Good for me. We'll start a little bit later. A couple of people have worked, so it might start, I don't know, like 7 p.m. GMT? Yes. Yeah, that's good for you, Sean? There's no oh, actually, enough. sorry, Thursday hasn't, I've just remembered, Thursday hasn't done it for me, I've got leaving drinks for, for someone. That is fine. Tell you what, um, we'll skip this Sunday and then we'll try and convene next week after. That right, sounds good. Sounds fine for me. Yeah, um, that is fine. Aon, interested in getting together Sunday and playing some game together? Uh, yeah, yeah, I might get the Hunter, I might read down the Hunter and play that. Yeah, oh, there's going to be a fucking new update coming with the... Uh, yeah, and the Palm up. The Paul with the fucking uh, tigers that you tell. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. That, that would be appropriate, given what we're doing now. Yeah. 
they uh, yeah, that's true. They they had a stance that they would not put endangered animals on the game for because they didn't want to cause outcry. But they decide it's okay with the lion or the tiger because it hunts you down. <laughs> so it's uh, fair. I think tigers kill around three hundred people a year in India. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, it is. They're still endangered, but yeah, they, they kill and eat people. Yep. But people are like, we want an elephant. Like, they're never going to put a fucking elephant in that game. No, no way. No. Unless they're also hunting you down, which would be <laughs> yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Be... Well, you just sat there slowly making a shot and then starting the fucking stampede on you. I don't the think first in the... Which gets crushed. <laughs> I don't think there's anything more scary for, like, a human brain to be charged by an elephant. <laughs> like, you know, we made cars, there's tanks, but it's, it's, there's just something about it being a fucking elephant, isn't it, right? Oh, I think it's a right there. there. I think a tornado would be up there. Yeah. They're tornado. basically, yeah, elephants are basically forces of nature. Thank I'll you, Dan. see you guys in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks as well. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dan.